Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. You know, you can get in contact with me if you want, if you want to say hi or anything. Um, the, all that information is in the show notes. But if you can't access that for some reason, if you can't find it, I will tell you. My email address is dictionarypod at gmail.com. Twitter and Instagram are both at dictionarypod. Uh, there is a phone number, which I don't know off the top of my head, that you can call and leave a voicemail. And you can also email me voice memos if you want to say something verbally instead of write it out. And uh, I just hope that you are all subscribing to this and sharing it with other people and just listening to it and enjoying this journey called The Dictionary. All right, let's read the words. In this last section of page 255, we're almost to the end of the C-O-M section. We will... We will transfer over to the C-O-N section in tomorrow's episode. Okay, um, first one in this one is compound complex. Wow, that seems rather redundant. It is two words with a hyphen, compound complex. Adjective from 1923, it is talking about a sentence, and it means having two or more main clauses and one or more subordinate clauses. It's... Very complex and compound. Next is compound I, like E-Y-E. Two words, noun from 1836. An I, as of an insect, made up of many separate visual units. Uh, Yes, it would be very strange if humans had a compound I, uh, but it's very normal in insects. I I really want to know how they see the world. What does that look like? People have tried to visually represent it in animation and film, but is that right? Is that how they actually see? What 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 is their brain thinking about what the world looks like? Okay, next we have compound fracture, two words, noun from 1543. A bone fracture resulting in an open wound, ooh, through which bone fragments usually protrude. Maybe I should have read that first, but that's not how I do this. Okay, that's bad. You see that in horror movies sometimes, and it you, I, it's hard to look at that. It's hard to look at it, but, uh, ooh, ooh, let's talk about this more. No, let's move on to compound interest, something that everybody loves. I may have a sneeze. This is a noun from 16, 1660. Interest computed on the sum of an original principle and accrued interest. It's a very complex thing. There's there's fancy formulas to figure it out. If you've got a mortgage, you probably know about that, or savings account. Okay, next is compound microscope. Two words, noun from circa 1859. A microscope consisting of an object and its eyepiece mounted in a draw tube. Next is compound number, two words, noun from the 15th century, a number involving different denominations or more than one unit, and the example is two feet, five inches. It is a compound number because it is using different forms, different things, different methods, different, there's a word for that, and I can't think of what it is. Okay, next we have comprador. It is spelled C O M. P-R-A-D-O-R, or you can add an E at the end. Comprador, noun from 1840. Number one, a Chinese agent engaged by a foreign establishment in China to have charge of its Chinese employees and to act as an intermediary in business affairs. And then number two, the synonym is intermediary. It's either very general or very specific, like the number one definition. Um, It's interesting because this is a Portuguese word, uh, from the Portuguese word comprador, which literally means buyer, the one who buys. Um, And how this became so specific to China, I have no idea, but it did. Next word, comprehend. This is a verb from the 14th century, starting with transitive, and is it only transitive? I think it is. Number one, to grasp the nature, significance, or meaning of, as in, unable to comprehend what has happened. Feel like that's me all the time. Number two, 
to contain or hold within a total scope, significance, or amount. To contain or hold within a total uh, within a total scope, significance, or amount. As in, philosophy's scope comprehends the truth of everything which man can understand. That is a quote from H. O. Taylor. Philosophy's scope comprehends the truth of everything that man may understand. Uh, yes, I think that's the idea of philosophy, is that all of philosophy, if you were to take every single piece of philosophy that ever has been thought out or written out by every single human being ever, it would comprehend, it would understand the truth of everything that humans may understand. I took one philosophy class. I think I should take more, actually. I, it just, I just think about that all the time. Just think about life and what's going on and what is it. Okay, number three, to include by construction or implication, as in, does not, does not prudence comprehend all the virtues? That is a quote from Thomas B. Silver. I hate it when, I don't hate it. It's just confusing to me because that's not how my brain works. Uh, comprehend. Does not prudence comprehend all the virtues? It's a very old way of talking. Uh, more synonyms, understand and include. Comprehendable is an adjective. This is from the Latin comprehendere, comprehendere, which is com plus prehendere, which means to grasp. And there's more of the word get. Yes, grasping, getting, understanding. When you comprehend it, you grasp the concept. Some concepts are very hard to grasp, but, but there's a way to figure it out. Next is comprehensible with an I-B-L-E at the end. Adjective from 1598, capable of being comprehended. Synonym is intelligible. Lots of, lots of problems come from things that are not comprehensible or things that are not comprehended. People are not explaining things well. We have an example. Did I already say it? A comprehensible explanation. You got to explain things in a comprehensible fashion. Comprehensibility is a noun. Comprehensibleness is a noun. Comprehensibly is an adverb. Next is comprehension. Noun from the 15th century. 1A. The act or action of grasping with the intellect. Understanding something with your mind, with your brain. It is That is your, you have comprehension of a thing. Uh, the synonym is the word understanding. I often don't have comprehension of many things, but I'm trying, I'm trying to learn. 1B, knowledge gained by comprehending. 1C, the capacity for understanding fully, as in mysteries that are beyond our comprehension. 2A, the act or process of comprising. 2, no, 2B, the faculty or capability of including. The faculty or capability of including. The synonym is comprehensiveness. And number three, it is the number three definition for the word connotation. Uh, let's see, this is from Latin comprehendere, which we talked about, which means to understand or compromise. No, comprise. Next word, comprehensive. Adjective from 1614. One, covering completely or broadly. And the synonym is inclusive. As in, comprehensive examinations. They cover all the things, all the topics. Also as in, comprehensive insurance. It covers all the things. Number two, having or exhibiting wide mental grasp. As in, comprehensive knowledge. Once I am done with this book, I shall have comprehensive knowledge. Comprehensively, comprehensively is an adverb and comprehensiveness is a noun. And we are on our last word. It is compress. We are emphasizing the second syllable. It is spelled C-O-M-P-R-E-S-S, -S, compress. This is the first form, and the second form will be in tomorrow's episode. The next one, number 1,000 and I don't know, 10-ish, 11-ish. Okay, um... No, actually, it'd be much more than that. It would be like 17, 18. Anyway, 
Um, come, come, compress. Verb from the 14th century, starting with transitive. One, to press or squeeze together. Two, to reduce in size. Flip in the page. Size, quantity, or volume as if by squeezing, as in compress a computer file. And there is one intransitive definition which says to undergo compression. There is a synonym for everything. It is the word contract. Contract. Uh, let's see. This is from the lower Latin, compressare, which means to press hard. Uh, from the Latin, comprimere, which means to compress. From com plus primere, which means to press. And there's more at the word press. All right. So the words today were compound complex. Compound I, compound fracture, compound interest, compound 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 microscope, compound number, comprador, comprehend, comprehensible, comprehension, comprehensive, and compress. What do I pick for the word of the episode? Do I comprehensive? I like that compre comprehension. Those uh, the whole section was good. Uh, the compound complex. I just like that word. Um, let's see, what, what direction do we want to go in? Um, uh, yeah, I'll just, compound complex is a fun word, and I don't always pick those. Com, compound, complex, compound, complex, compound, complex, compound, complex, compound, complex, compound. All right, in, uh, it's a holiday time in Estonia. I, I need to figure out when I started this holiday thing, because I think it's probably been over a year, and I'm still doing it, but I think I need to stop because I've gone through everything. I'll figure that out later. In Estonia, it is Day of Declaration of Sovereignty. In Iceland, ooh, we don't see Iceland enough. It is Icelandic Language Day, and in their language, it is said something like Dagor Islandkrar Tungu. That is a hard language but uh, I learned a little bit when I was there. You you got to go visit. You got to go visit if you can. In the UN, it is International Day for Tolerance. Let's be tolerant. In the Caribbean, Netherlands. The Caribbean, Netherlands? The Netherlands has the Caribbean? The Caribbean? It is uh, Statia Day or Stacia Day uh, in St. Eustatius. More holidays. Let's check this page. It is um, bu -bu 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 -bu, International Flamenco Day. Should we play some flamenco music? In India, it is National Press Day. Not compress, but the press, probably like the media. In the U.S., it is National Fast Food Day. Only in moderation, though. All right, more fun holidays. Have a party with your bear day. Shows a picture of a teddy bear. I think that's probably what they mean. But if you have an actual bear, first of all, uh, be careful, because you never know. Um... But, but also have a party with it. Um, National Button Day, National Entrepreneur's Day. Oh, it's a pretty short list on this one. I just, I'm just i loving this International Day for Tolerance. It shows a picture of a bunch of people showing the sign language uh, sign for love. I believe that is what that is. Um, anything else? Let's see. By douge. That It's two words. By douge. Um, road Safety Week. Be careful on the roads. I think that is it for today. We have finished page 255. I will talk to you tomorrow when we read more words. All right. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. We are at the top of page 256. And... Let's talk about the words. The first word is the second form of the word compress. Now, I think in the last episode, it was compress, 
we are emphasizing the first syllable this time, compress, C-O-M-P-R-E-S-S, noun from 1599, one, a folded cloth or pad applied so as to press upon a body part, usually probably the forehead, two, a machine for compressing. This is from the Middle French compresser, which means to compress. That sort of sounded Italian. Uh, yeah, that's that. Next is compressed or compressed. So we've added an ed, and you can emphasize the first or the second syllable. This is an adjective from the 14th century. One, pressed together, also reduced in size or volume, as by pressure. Two, flattened as though subjected to compression. To A, flattened laterally, as in petioles compressed. To B, narrow from side to side and deep in a dorsoventral direction. Dorsoventral, would that be something about the body, the, your veins maybe? Uh, compressed veins, this does not sound good. Compressedly, is a an uh, an adverb. All right, next we have compressed air, two words, noun from 1669, air under pressure greater than that of the atmosphere. And then you hit the button and the air goes pssst, and you can use that to clean out your keyboard or other things. Next is compressible, adjective from circa 1691, capable of being compressed. Compressibility is a noun. That is, uh, co the compressibility of a thing that is compressible is will be compressed. Okay, next is compression. Noun from the 15th century, 1A. The act, process, or result of compressing. 1B. The state of being compressed. 2. The process of of compressing the fuel mixture in a cylinder of an internal combustion engine. And that is talking about an automobile. Possibly. Three, the compressed remains of a fossil plant. Four, conversion as of data or data file or a communication signal in order to reduce the space occupied or bandwidth required. Uh, yeah, I, I know on a PC and a Apple computers do this too. You can take a folder and you can compress it down so it doesn't take up as much space and it's easier to send and sometimes that's required. It's a zip file or a compressed file of some kind. Next is compressional wave. Two words, noun from 1875. A longitudinal wave, as a sound wave, propagated by the elastic compression of the medium called also just compression wave. Waves and sound and vibrations, I think, are so interesting. Because so many things are that, especially sound. Next word is compressive. It is a very impressive word. Adjective from 1572, one, of or relating to compression. Two, tending to compress. Compressively is an adverb. Next is compressor. There's an O-R at the end. Noun from 1839. One that compresses as A. A musical... No, what, no, that's not the word musical. It's the word muscle. A muscle that compresses a part. Uh, B. A machine that compresses gases. Next word is comprise. It is with an S-E at the end. No, I'm sorry, it is not getting a prize at the carnival. It's just comprise. This is a verb from the 15th century, and it is just transitive. We do have some usage information at the end. So, number one, to include especially within a particular scope, as in civilization, as Lenin used the term, would then certainly have comprised the changes that are now associated in our minds with developed rather than developing states. Were you shocked to hear that that quote was so long? I was too. That is from the Times Literary Supplement, the Times Lit Sup. Uh, Lenin, that, uh, who is mentioned here, is L-E-N-I-N, -N, not 
the singer-songwriter, John Lennon, different Lennon. Uh, But yes, that was a whole long quote. Civilization, as Lennon used the term, would then certainly have comprised the changes that are now associated in our minds with developed rather than developing states. (laughs) Than developing states. All right, moving on to number two. To be made up of, as in a vast installation comprising 50 buildings. And that is a quote from Jane Jacobs. Three synonyms are compose and constitute, as in a misconception as to what comprises a literary generation. That is a quote from William Styron, or Styron, S-T-Y-R-O-N. Also as in, about 8% of our military forces are comprised of women, That is a quote, probably a very old quote, from Jimmy Carter, the president in the late 70s. Uh, Yes, probably back in the late 70s, I'm guessing, about 8% of military forces were comprised of women, but I think it has drastically changed since then. Maybe they need to update the quotes. Usage information for comprise. Although it has been in use since the late 18th century, I feel like I'm telling you a little story. Sense 3, this is the one that's compose and constitute. Um, Sense 3 is still attacked as wrong. Why it has been singled out is not clear, but until comparatively recent times, it was found chiefly in scientific or technical writing rather than Bell's Lech or Letris. I don't know what that is. B E L L E S. B-E-L-L-E-S, second word L-E-T-T-R-E-S, belle lettre. Our current evidence shows a slight shift in usage. Sense 3 is somewhat more frequent in recent literary use than the earlier senses. You should be aware, however, that's the writers talking directly to us. You should be aware, however, that if you use Sense 3, you may be subject to criticism for doing so. And you may want to choose a safer synonym such as compose or make up. All right, that's good to know. Uh, yes, number th- the, the third sense I said was compose, constitute, those were the synonyms. And the quotes, the quotes were a misconception as to what comprises a literary generation. And the other quote, as I talked about, was about 8% of our military forces are comprised of women. So they, a lot of people say that it's better to use compose or so something like that all right our last word for this episode is compromise c-o-m-p-r-o-m-i-s-e it is the first form second form is in tomorrow's episode this is a noun from the 15th century 1a settlement of differences by arbitration or by consent reached by mutual concessions 1b something intermediate between or blending qualities of two different things. Two, a concession to something derogatory or prejudicial, as in a compromise of principles. Uh, Let's see, this etymology says Middle English, and it just means mutual promise to abide by an arbiter's decision. Um, I think that is good. Let's see, from the Latin verb compromettere, which, uh, oh, from Latin compromissum, which is neutral of, oh, I read the wrong part. It's from the verb compromettere. I said that to promise mutually, to promise mutually. Both are promising equally. Uh, From promettere, which means to promise, and there's more at the word promise, which is right there in the word. So the words today in this episode were uh, uh, compress, compressed, compressed air, compressible, Compression, compressional wave, compressive, compressor, comprise, and compromise. Well, um, let's see. I guess I'm leaning towards compromise, but it seems like this one is a little bit different. I'm, I, I'm thinking maybe I'm liking the, possibly the compromise in the next episode, but I haven't read it yet. Ooh, we're thinking too much on this. Let's pick compressed air as the word of the episode. Spray it out of the can. Clean out your keyboard. It's compressed air. Go get some. 
All right, let's talk about the holidays. I think I am well past one year of reading these holidays. I do not remember, and I haven't had time to go back and look. So, um, it is International Students' Day. In Orissa, India, it is Martyrs' Day. In the Marshall Islands, it is President's Day. In the Czech Republic and Slovakia, it is Struggle for Freedom and Democracy Day. It's also World Prematurity Day. I can only imagine that has to do with uh, babies born prematurely, but maybe we'll find out a bit more later. Uh Uh-oh, I did not update this page. So, let us see what it has to say. Um, GIS Day in America, National Take a Hike Day, National Unfriend Day. Um, In Germany, Day of Repentance and Prayer. It's also GIS Day in Canada. Mm, In Greece, it is Polytechneo. And let's go to some fun holidays. I think we already read some of them. It is Electronic Greeting Card Day. It's a a much better to send those because you have much more customability and you're not wasting so much money and paper and things like that. I just, I hate greeting cards. I much prefer the electronic ones. It is, oh, this is GIS, Geographic Information Systems Day, Homemade Bread Day, International Happy Goza Day, and that is Goza, the beer. It's like a beer. It's related to beers, G-O-S-E. Happy Goza Day. Uh, Let's see. Ooh, National Baklava Day. Mm, National Educational Support Professionals Day. National Farm Joke Day. So is it jokes about farms? Hmm. Uh, The Little Mermaid Day. World Peace Day. And World Prematurity Day. Yes, that shows a picture of a a baby. Um, Any other... I wouldn't call those fun holidays, but anyone... any. So it's National Take a Hike Day, also National Hiking Day. So, you know, they're, they're the same. They're the same thing. That is it for this episode. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer. I accidentally hit the stop button. This is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this podcast called The Dictionary. I am your host, Spencer. Should I update the logo to say, like, with Spencer or hosted by Spencer? I don't know. Should I? Let me know if you have any opinion on the matter whatsoever. Okay, this is the second section of page 256. The first word is the second form of compromise. C O M. P-R-O-M-I-S-E, verb from 1598, starting with transitive. Number one, obsolete, to bind by mutual agreement. Number two, to adjust or settle by mutual concessions. Do they Are they selling popcorn at the concessions? 3A, to expose to suspicion, discredit, or mischief. As in, his reputation has been compromised. Uh, 3B, to reveal or expose to an unauthorized person and especially to an enemy. As in, confidential information was compromised. 3C, to cause the impairment of. As in, a compromised immune system. Also as in, a seriously compromised patient. Well, yeah, they're probably the same person in both of these examples. If they have a seriously, if they have a compromised immune system, they are a seriously compromised patient. Okay, intransitive time, 1A, to come to agreement by mutual concession. 1B, to find or follow a way between extremes. 2, to make a shameful or disreputable concession, as in, wouldn't compromise with their principles. Compromiser is a noun. Next is compt. It's not a real word. Well, it kind of is. C-O-M-P-T. It definitely is. You could say compt or you could say count. Count? Yes, you can say count for this word spelled C-O-M-P-T. It is an archaic variation of the word count. Why did it get pronounced as count? How did that happen? Interesting. Letters and 
pronunciations were so different back in the day. Uh, okay, I thought it was an abbreviation, which is why I said it's not a word, but it is. It's comp or count. Okay, next word, controller. Or, let's see, interesting. It's the word comptroller, C-O-M-P-T-R-O-L-L-E-R, but it does look like one of the approved pronunciations is just controller, like your video game controller, but that is not at all how it's spelled. Um, yeah, I'll just say comptroller because that's what I've heard. I've never known what it is. I will. I get to learn now, and so do you. This is a noun from the 15th century. One, a royal household official who examines and supervises expenditures. Number two, a public official who audits government accounts and sometimes certifies expenditures. And number three, it is the 1C definition for the word controller. Uh, Comptrollership is a noun. So I think it's the number two one that is the one that there's a comptroller of a city. So basically they, they look at the money and they do stuff and I still don't understand. Okay, next word. It is compulsion. Noun from the 15th century. 1A, an act of compelling. The state of being compelled. 1B, a force that compels. 2, an irresistible persistent impulse to form an act uh, as excessive hand washing. Also, just the act itself is the compulsion. Uh, It's good to wash your hands a lot, you know, often more than probably most people do. But yes, there is a certain point where it becomes to be a, a compulsion. Uh, it could be connected to a, a, um, a mental health thing going on. Um, yeah, you, you can overdo it. You, you don't want to like wear away the skin in your hands. So, you know, wash your hands, but not like constantly, not compulsively. Um, you know, and if you are, then maybe you can uh, get some help. See a therapist, get some medication, talk to somebody, figure out why it's happening. Maybe you can work out, work out, work it out, work it out. Uh, okay, this is from the Latin compelere, which means to compel. Next is compulsive. Adjective from 1588. One, having power to compel. Two, of, relating to, caused by, or suggestive of psychological compulsion or obsession. As in, compulsive actions. Also as in, a compulsive gambler. I think most people have some sort of compulsiveness. They have, there's something going on. Um, and I think most people can deal with it in a, in a pretty healthy way. But um, it, it can get to a certain point where it, it becomes becomes a problem. So... Try not to get there, and if you do, see if you can get some help. Like I said, very similar to compulsion. Um, Compulsively is an adverb. Compulsiveness is a noun. Compulsivity is also a noun. I guess I I am am compulsed to read this book to you for some reason. Next word is compulsory. Compulsory. It is an adjective from 1581. One, synonyms are mandatory and enforced, as in compulsory retirement. They're making you retire. Two, synonyms are coercive and compelling, as in compulsory measures. Compulsory measures. Compulsorily. Compulsorily. I think that's how you would say it. Compulsorily? Maybe it's, maybe it's that. Compulsorily. That's an adverb, if I can actually say it correctly. Next is compunction, noun from the 14th century, 1A, anxiety arising from awareness of guilt, as in compunction of conscience. 1B, distress of mind over an anticipated action or result, as in showed no compunction in planning devilish games of destruction. And that is a quote from Havelock Ellis. Havelock? That's a cool first name, H-A-V-E-L-O-C-K, Havelock Ellis. Number two, a twinge of misgiving. Synonym is scruple, as in cheated without compunction. 
Uh, more synonyms for everything. They are the words penitence. Yep, that's the word penitence. And also qualm. And compunctious is an adjective. Let's see. It is from the Latin compungere, which means to prick. Uh, oh, sorry, to prick hard or sting. From com plus pungere, which means to prick. And there's more at the word pungent. And uh, I feel like I have to say, when I the things that I said about compulsion and compulsive, you know, I'm just a guy who's talking about the whatever the little bit of stuff that I know, which is not a lot. And you know, I apologize if uh, if I said anything wrong or if it was just didn't feel right for whatever reason. So I, I apologize if that came out weird. But I hope it didn't. Um, but you know, it could be because I'm just talking off the top of my head, and I don't know what comes out all the time. Anyway, I'm just saying, you know. This, I'm just saying the stuff that I said. So, yeah. All right. We are going to move on to compurgation. Compurgation. Noun from circa 1658. The clearing of an accused person by oaths of others who swear to the veracity or innocence of the accused. And this is from the Latin verb compurgare, which means to clear completely from com plus purgare, which means to purge. Uh, so they have, uh, I guess, purged, purged the um, the accusation from the person because of the oaths of all the other people who said, no, 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 they are innocent. They Yes, that's how that, compurgation. All right, next is probably related. It is compurgator, compurgator. Uh, it is not... It is not a lizard living in the water. It is a noun from 1533. One who under oath vouches for the character or conduct of an accused person. So the compurgator is helping the accused person by compurgation. Next word, computable. Adjective from 1646, capable of being computed. And computability is a noun. And our last word for this episode is computation, C-O-M-P-U-T-A-T-I-O-N, computation, noun from the 15th century, 1A, the act or action of computing, and the synonym is calculation, 1B, the use or operation of a computer, 2, a system of reckoning. And three, an amount computed. Computational is an adjective, and computationally is an adverb. And yeah, we're going to get to the word computer in tomorrow's episode. All right. So the words today were, com- uh, I can't even say them, compromise, compt, comptroller, compulsion, compulsive, compulsory, compunction, compurgation, compurgator, computable, and computation. I think I will pick compromise as the word of the episode because I think I think a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm focusing on the one that has to do with, um, where was it? Uh, to come to an agreement by mutual concession, which means that both parties, if there's more, if two or more parties have agreed to give up something, they've agreed on that together, they are both doing it or more, all of them are doing it, and it is, it is, it's an agreement to make everybody happy. And, um, I, you know, I think a lot of people don't like to do that. And I think that more people should probably do that. You got to do that a lot in various kinds of relationships. Uh, so to keep everybody happy, because if somebody's not compromising ever and the other one is, that's first of all, not a compromise because it's not mutual. And also one person is probably not very happy about that situation. So don't be afraid to compromise, I guess. Don't be afraid to compromise. Do 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 do. All right, the holidays for today. In Haiti, it is Day of Army and Victory. In Morocco, it is Independence Day, which is from France and Spain in 1956. In Oman, it is National Day. It is the Proclamation Day of the Republic of Latvia, which is the uh, their independence from Russia in 1918. In Croatia, it is Remembrance Day of the Sacrifice of Vukovar in 1991. This page says we have, in America, 
Great American Smokeout, which I'm assuming is talking about barbecue. Um, let's see. In the European Union, it is European Day on the protection of children against sexual exploitation and sexual abuse. And this is a this is still a big problem, just like all the other problems we've got. Um, yeah, so at least the Europe is trying to do something about it, but maybe other places can try to do something about it too. Uh, let's see. I think we will save that one for the end. Let's read some fun holidays. Ooh, it is Apple Cider Day. Uh, I've been starting to get a just a hot apple cider from the cafe near our place, and it's tasty. Cools down pretty quick. Uh, but yes, I do love a, love a good good apple cider. It is International Guinness World Records Day. Uh, man, these books, I would get these books every year when they came out when I was a kid. They were these small, fat little books. They've completely changed. Um, but I just loved like, oh, what's what's the new thing? The the biggest, the, the people ones were the ones that I, I loved the most. You know, somebody who is super short or super tall or super fat or super skinny or whatever it was. I just was so fascinated by that stuff. Um, yeah, I have way too many of those facts stuck in my head. Um, it is married to a Scorpio support day. So if you are uh, married to somebody who is a Scorpio, you can get some support today. National Princess Day. Go be a princess. National Rural Health Day. National, this looks like a soup or something. It is, how do you pronounce this? Vichyssoise? Did I say that correctly? Vichyssoise? It's National Vichyssoise Day. It's also another French thing. Nouveau Beaujolais Day. That's a wine. It is Occult Day. That is O C C U L T. That's like, you know, how do I how do I even describe it? I don't know. We'll wait till the O's. It is Push Button Phone Day. Social Enterprise Day. Use Less Stuff Day. Yes, we all have way too much stuff. We don't need it. I don't. I don't need it. You don't need it. Let's get rid of it. It is William Tell Day. Uh, William Tell, was he the one who shot the arrow on top of his brother's head, or was that somebody else? I can't remember. Uh, the apple, he hit the apple. Um, World Pancreatic Cancer Day, I've heard that's a really bad one. I mean, cancer is bad enough as it is. Um, it is World Philosophy Day. It's just, just go sit and think. There's a picture of a woman thinking. Just think about life, think about stuff. Um, oh, and I missed some. Uh, it is World Antibiotic Awareness Week. And also, so here's the, this is the interesting thing. It is Mickey Mouse Day. It's also Mickey Mouse's birthday. So obviously it's Mickey Mouse Day because it's his birthday. Why they have to be listed separately, I'm not sure. It's just Mickey Mouse Day. Maybe this was the day that his first cartoon aired um, back many, 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 many years ago. Um, but it's also Minnie Mouse's birthday. So... They were born on the same day? That's so interesting. Uh, maybe they were in the same uh, same cartoon together. Maybe. That would be interesting. Then why isn't it just also Minnie Mouse Day? Mickey Mouse Day, Minnie Mouse Day. Maybe it should just be Mouse Day. Disney Mouse. Oh, oh, Mickey Mouse. There's so much, so much related. So much, so many connotations with that face. All right, we're going to end the episode there. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. And in the previous episode, I accidentally, my finger slipped and I hit the stop button, which is why it ended early. But I won't do that today, will I? I don't know. We'll find out. Okay, bye. Hello, all you word nerdy people. Thank you for turning on this podcast. I appreciate it. Sorry, I just had some food. It must have been stuck in my mustache. Um, these are the things that you need to know. I need to shave this beard off. It's getting too long. Um, so uh, let's see. I think we can just start reading this section of the page, can't we? I think we can. All right. Uh, the first word in this episode is compute. C-O-M-P-U-T-E. Verb from 1616. To determine, especially by mathematical means. Also, to determine or calcul calculate by means of a computer. Uh, that was transitive, by the way. Now we are on intransitive one 
to make calculation. The synonym is reckon. <laughs> I, I never would have put calculation and reckon together. I reckon that I've made a calculation. Uh, was that derogatory of some kind? I'm not sure. But, you know, I'll, also it should say to make a calculation, just not to make calculation. Number two, to use a computer. Uh, this is from the Latin computare, which means, uh, no, it doesn't say what it means, but I'm sure it has something to do with computing. Uh, and there's more at the word count. Oh, interesting. I think I just made a connection. Uh, we had that weird word in yesterday's episode, C-O-M-P-T, which could be pronounced count. And so, you know, if you look at the uh, the etymology, the Latin computare uh, became compt, you know, you're, it's all the same letters. Uh, and so then somehow it became count. That I'm still not sure about. Um, okay, we are now on computed tomography. Two words, noun from 1974. Radiography, in which a three-dimensional image of a body structure is constructed by computer from a series of plain cross-sectional images made along an axis. And this is called also computed axial tomography, or computerized axial tomography, or computerized tomography um would this be mri an mri is that it's something radiographic imaging uh I th maybe that's what this is but yeah you've seen you've seen on the tvs in the movies they show you a bunch of cross sections of a body maybe starting at the head and then going uh you know i've seen some of these in person they there was literally chopped up bodies in a museum in chicago which i think they got rid of but it was fascinating but yeah, computers, they take these scans one by one by one, all these planes, and then they can create a 3D image of it. And that is science, and it helps to see what's going on in the body. Next is, oh, it's the word computer. We all are on computers all the time, using computers. They are such a huge part of our life. Um, it is a noun from you would not have thought of this, 1646. But of course, this word was used in a much, much different way back then. Um, it's it's just one definition, technically. One that computes. Just a thing, a, th a thing, a person, whatever. One, one that computes is a computer. But specifically, a programmable, usually electronic device that can store, retrieve, and process data or data. So the thing... It's a, it's a computer. It's computing. Computerdom is a noun. Well, what would that be? All the computers get together and they have a kingdom. It's a computerdom. Uh, computerless is an adjective. And, and so, oh, it's so sad when you don't have a computer, right? Uh, there are some people in the world who don't, but not very many. Um, I'm just making jokes because maybe we are relying too much on computers. Computer-like is an adjective. Next is computerese. I like this. Computerese. Uh, it ends in an ESE. It is a noun from circa 1960. Jargon used by computer technologists. And, uh, you know, obviously this is still a thing, but I don't think people ever call it computerese. Uh, I would like to <laughs> see an actual example of somebody using this word. Um, also, people who use this jargon would come up with a better word anyway. Next is computer eyes with an I-S-E. It is the chiefly British variation of computer eyes with an I-Z-E. Next is computerist. Computerist, noun from 1973, a person who uses or operates a computer. And, you know, of course I'm looking at this word from a very uh, 21st century brain. Um, let's see, yeah, because back in the 70s when computers, like the tech, the electronic computers were first getting started, um, you know, not that long before that, you needed a name for the person who was using the thing because it was usually maybe one or two people who were operating the computer. You were big boxes, Mad Men has a great example of computers and how big and expensive they were and how it was such a different thing to process. Uh, I just find it so fascinating. I just want to be a fly on the wall. 
Um, but yes, the, the person doing the thing is the computerist. And um, I think, yeah, we got another good one coming up. Um, computer eyes is next with a Z or a Z. Although if it were with a Z, it would be said by a British person and the British person would spell it with an S. So it just doesn't work out that way. Um, this is a transitive verb from 1957. One, to carry out control or produce by means of a computer, as in computerized music. Two, to equip with computers, as in computerize public schools. That happened, I mean, we had, we had some computers when I was a kid, but it really happened after I got out of school. All the schools got computers, like, you know, personal laptops and iPads. I'm, I think I'm glad I didn't have that. 3A, to store in a computer, as in computerized data. You're basically just digitizing it, but you are computerizing it. Uh, 3B, to put in a form that a computer can use, as in computerized paperwork. Computerizi no, computerizable is an adjective, and computerization is a noun. Here we go. This one's a fun one. It is computer Nick, and it is uh, it has an N I K at the end. It is a noun from 1968. A computer enthusiast or expert. They are a computer Nick. Um, and where 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 do we get? Where's this word come from? Uh, Sputnik, I know, but that's completely different. Um, there's some English word that I cannot think of that has Nick at the end, and it means you know an enthusiast or expert. Um, so I just think it's funny because I've never heard this word used ever and I don't know if it ever was, but it technically exists. Uh, so if you like computers, you're a computer Nick. Next is computer phobe. This is the opposite. It is a noun from 1976, a person who experiences anxiety about computers and especially about their use, their use of how to use them and the person's use of the computer's uh, computer, computer phobia is a noun. Computer phobic is an adjective. Uh, I know some people who are not computer phobic, but they are self possess self, self called, uh, neophytes or, you know, not, it's hard to do new things. Um, so they're not as big on computers as other people are, but you know, that's okay. That's fine. I'm not big on things that other people like, so it's fine. Also, I think it's probably better. They get to get a more real-world experience, which is good. Okay, next is computer science. Two words, noun from 1961. A branch of science that deals with the theory and... No, the th theory of computation or the design of computers. Oh, I never got into this. Maybe it would have been a good thing for me, but it's just not, not what I was interested in, so... It didn't make any sense. I mean, I think it's kind of fascinating, but not like other people. Maybe you like it. You should go into it. It's probably a good thing to, to learn, although things are changing. They're always changing. What's new? What's the next thing that's going to come? What's the new science? Okay, next is C-O-M-R. It is an abbreviation for commissioner. Next is comrade. You could say comrade or comrade. Uh... I guess the Brits say comrade, comrade, because that's how it's spelled. That's actually, it makes more sense. It is a noun from 1544, 1A, an intimate friend or associate. Synonym is companion. 1B, a fellow soldier. 2, uh, the synonym is communist. And this one has its own etymology. It is from its use as a form of address by communists. The communists call the other communists comrades, and so that's why sometimes comrade just means communist. Comradeliness, is that that word? Comradeliness? That is a noun. Comradely is an adjective, and comradeship is a noun. Uh, it is from the Middle French camarade. It's a group sleeping in one room. Hmm, I was not prepared for this. The camarade is the group sleeping, a whole group of people sleeping in one room, also just a roommate or companion. And so it's comrade. Uh, oh, more. There's more. From the old Spanish camarada, which is from camara, which means room. I think we talked about that before. Camera is just room. It's a space. 
Yeah, from uh, the Latin cam camera, camera, and there's more of the word chamber. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a whole, it's an interesting way that this all evolved. All right, next is camaraderie. Camaraderie, camaraderie. So many ways, noun from 1879. The synonym is camaraderie, spelled C-A-M-A-R-A-D-E-R-I-E. -E. Camaraderie. It's just people hanging out. It's, the, it's fun. Good stuff. Next is COMSAT, capital C-O-M-S-A-T. It is a service mark, and it is used for communications services involving an artificial satellite. Is it is COM computer satellite? Is that what it... I don't know. Next is Comstockery. Comstockery with a capital C. Noun from 1905. One, strict censorship of materials considered obscene. Hmm. Uh, number two, censorious opposition. That's like the word censor is in there. Censorious opposition to alleged immorality as in literature. And uh, yeah, this is a from a person. A person is the one who is trying to be very strict, I guess, about things. Uh, their name was Anthony Comstock. So as far as I can tell, Anthony Comstock was trying to censor stuff, and maybe we'll post a link in the show notes so I, where you can go learn more about this guy if you want. You don't have to. It's, it's your choice. Next is Comstockian. So is this related? Adjective from 1921 of or relating to Comstockery is Comstockian. We do not need a Comstockian regime trying to censor everything. That's my thought. Next is Comsimp. C-O-M-S-Y-M-P. It is a noun from circa 1961. It is usually disparaging. It is a person sympathetic to communist causes. So they may not be a communist themselves, but they're sympathetic. They agree with it. Maybe maybe they don't want to go that far. They they appreciate it. They're they're sympathetic. Um, and it is com simp because it is a com combination of communist and sympathizer. A communist synthesizer would be a com synth synth com synth is a communist synthesizer. What kind of synthesizer is that? Is there only one type of music? that everybody has to listen to. I don't know the, the depth of communism. Uh, okay, we are on our last word, and it is the last word of the C-O-M section, which I feel like was pretty long. I mean, the letter C is just pretty long in general, but I think this one was particularly long. Um, next, we have the C-O-N section, which I assume is going to be equally as long as C-O-M, and I could figure all this stuff out if I really felt like it. Um, yeah, so that'll be starting with tomorrow. So anyway, our last word uh, is com Comptian or Kantian, C-O-M-T-I-A-N or T-E-A-N, comp uh, Comptian, Comptian, yeah. It is an adjective from 1846 of or relating to Auguste Comte or his doctrines. What did his doctrines have to say? Comptism is a noun, and comptist is an adjective or a noun. Um, maybe someday the, the word parxist will be in here for my thoughts and doctrines. No, I don't, I don't think that makes any sense. Um, let's see, we said all of that, and uh, it's, um, yeah, the etymology is part of the definition, basically. So the words today were compute, computed tomography, computer, computeries, Computerize, computerist, computerize, computer nick, computer phobe, computer science, C O M R, comrade, comraderie, comsat, comstockery, comstockian, compsimp, comptian. Uh, well, I don't know what Auguste Comte had to say, so I'm not sure if I like it or I don't like it, and I'm not a big fan of some of these other things, especially comsats. Those comsats, they don't help nothing, no. Um, let's see, I, I do like comrade. I'm thinking about maybe comrade. Computer is a pretty good general one. Um, comrade also has such such feelings of, you know, 
Russian and communist, and not that they're bad or necessarily in any way. It just has those connotations. So it's, you know. Anyway, I think I will pick computer as the word of the episode. Uh, we got our first computer when I was four years old, which I think was at that time was a lot younger than most people. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's been a big part of my whole life and all of you probably as well. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's just find it interesting, I guess, to think about that. But I'm glad I grew up when I did because we had a good mix of analog and digital. We had LPs, we had records, vinyl, uh, but you know, then we got into the computer world. So had it all, film, video, yeah. Okay, that is uh, going to be the end of that part. And then next part is me singing a song about computers because computers are great, overall really great. And, you know, we should get into more nature. Oh, isn't it great when those songs just fall off the rails like that? So in Puerto Rico, it is day of discovery of Puerto Rico. Hmm, did they have indigenous people though? Did somebody actually discover them? Or were there people already there? How did the people get there? In Russia and Belarus, it is day of missile forces and artillery. In Brazil, it is flag day. In Belize, it is Garifuna settlement day. It is international men's day. Men's, I think almost every day is your day. So I, we don't, I don't know if we need to be celebrating men as many, any more than we already are. In Mali, it is liberation day. In Uttar Pradesh, India, it is Martyrs Day. In Monaco, it is the Sovereign Prince's Day. It is, <laughs> it's a good one coming up. It is Women's Entrepreneurship. That is also a very good one. Um, Let's see. Uh, in India, it is Guru Nanak Jayanti. In Brazil, it is Flag Day. Fun holidays, maybe. Have a bad day day. Maybe it'll happen, but that maybe that means that tomorrow will be a good get good day. But I, the day in there twice is funking me up. Having a bad day day, equal opportunity day, international stand up to bullying day. And if you are not, why not? What if you were in school and you see somebody being bullied, say something. My niece did this and it really impressed me, but she's got good parents. Um, Yes, stand up to bullies and also don't bully. National Blow Bagpipes Day. I really would like to play some bagpipes. National Camp Day. Go to camp, I guess, or don't. Do whatever. National Carbonated Beverage with Caffeine Day. These are probably some of the worst drinks in the world for you. I mean, really, we all know it, but we need to stop drinking this stuff. Play Monopoly Day. It can be a very long time, and we don't always have time to play Monopoly. But if you want to play Monopoly, you can play Monopoly. Uh, what what piece do you use? Why don't you send me an email if you want to tell me what piece you use on Monopoly? I had a whole collection of Monopoly games, and I've gotten rid of it, almost all of it. But I love the pieces, the little pieces. It is, we said women Women's Entrepreneurship Day, but it's important enough to say it again. And lastly, well, let's just check this page to see if there's anything else. World, National Integration Day? Did we say that? That's huge. Um, but it's World Toilet Day. So just enjoy your toilet. Um, it's a it's a very important part of our life. It took so many years for them to even like show a toilet in a movie or flush a toilet on something. And it's this is just the natural thing in our world. So don't make a big deal out of it. But toilets are great. If you haven't seen that SNL sketch of the the love toilet or whatever it was called, you should go watch that. Maybe I'll put a link in the show notes because it's hilarious. Thank you very much for listening to this. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Uh, my voice is getting kind of raw. This is the fourth episode. This is what I do usually. And uh, this is how this is just the pattern that I've got right now. Um. The other part of the pattern is uh, please rate and review this podcast if you are enjoying it. That would make me feel good. It would give me validation that there are other people listening to this, and I'm not talking out into the ether, but also it doesn't matter. Um, you can subscribe and share and contact me in some form. Email is dictionarypod at gmail.com. 
Instagram and Twitter is at DictionaryPod. I have said those so many times. Okay, this is the last section, as I said, and it is the beginning of C-O-N. And there's some fun words in here. So we'll, we will say them. Um, the first word in this episode is con, C-O-N. It is the first form, and I'm not even going to tell you how many forms there are, because you will find out as we go. Con, it is a transitive verb from the 13th century. One, to commit to memory. I don't, I don't think I've heard that. You commit something to memory, you con it. Number two, to study or examine closely. This is from Middle English, conen, which means to know, learn, study. It's an alternative of kunen, which means to know uh, from can, more it can. That's what it says. This is not the word I thought it was. Mm, Second form of con is a variation of con with two N's. Third form of con, adverb from the 15th century, on the negative side. In opposition, as in, so much has been written pro and con. I love making pros and cons lists, don't you? That's so much fun. Just random things. What are the pros and cons of this chair? Okay, oh, by the way, that one is short for contra. Yeah, contra. Okay, fourth form of con, noun from 1589. One, an argument or evidence in opposition. Two, the negative position, or one holding it, as in an appraisal of the pros and cons. Isn't that the same one as before? Another form of con, the fifth one, adjective from 1589, nope, nope, 1889, the synonym is confidence, um, as in a con artist. Oh, that's where it comes from. Huh, really? Hmm, okay. Uh, we're just going to see what else happens. Um, also is in a con game. So those, those both make me think of a con artist is the one who's doing the con game, the one who's stealing money from somebody in some way in a, you know, in an interesting manner probably, but it's short for confidence, a confidence artist. They're so confident. No, let's look, let's look at the next one, which is the sixth form of con. It is a transitive verb from the, a, the 1896 number one. The synonym is swindle. This is the one I was thinking of, as in, accused of conning retirees out of their savings. Number two is the 2B definition for the word manipulate. Number three, the synonyms are persuade and cajole. But it didn't use con artist or con game in there, so maybe they're still connected somehow. Seventh form of con, noun from 1901, something as a ruse, Used deceptively to gain another's confidence. Oh, that's where it comes in from. Also, a confidence game. The synonym is the word swindle. So, oh, that... Is this just common knowledge and I'm just now picking up on this? Uh, This is so interesting, I guess. Why? Not sure. But you are getting... You are conning somebody because you get their confidence. They trust you, so then you take their money. And that's a very mean thing to do. Eighth form of con is a noun from 1893, and the synonym is convict, or is it convict? Those are two different words that are similar. Convict is the person. Convict would be the acting of convicting the convict to the thing. Ninth form of con, noun from 1915. It is slang. It is a destructive disease of the lungs, especially the synonym tuberculosis. And this is short for the word consumption, which I have heard used sort of in that health medical sense, but I never really understood what it was. So maybe we'll learn later. And the last form of con, it is not the last word in the episode, it is the 10th form. It's abbreviation for one, consort, two, consolidated, three, consul, Spelled C O N S U L. Would it be would it be consul, consul, cons? Uh, I don't know any other ways. For uh, the word continued, and an unofficial eleventh form of con is a prefix, and it just says C com C O M, which is also a prefix. 
which I think takes you to see a, a something else. All right, our next more, more real word, quote unquote, is con albumin. Con albumin, noun from uh, 1900. A protein of the white of egg that binds with metal ions as of iron and copper. Hmm. Next is conamore. Conamore. Two words, C-O-N-A-O-A-M-O-R-E. That is conamore. Adverb from 1739. One, with love, devotion, or zest. You have done it. Zesty. Number two, in a tender manner, and this is used as a direction in music. So, you want to play the music with more love and devotion and zest. It is, of course, Italian. Next is conamina. Con, and then the word A-N-I-M-A. Conamina. Uh, What is the conamina code? Up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right. This is an adverb from circa 1906. In a spirited manner. And this is used as a direction in music. Spirited, anima, with animation. It is Italian, and it literally means with spirit. When you uh, animate something, you are putting the spirit into it. Next is conation. Conation, noun from circa 1837. An inclination, as an instinct, a drive, a wish, or a craving, to act purposefully. And it is also the number three definition for the word impulse. An inclination to... hmm, I lost the place. An inclination to act purposefully. It is your conation. Um, Conative, no, conative or conative or conative. That is an adjective. Mm, It's from conatio, act of attempting from conari, which means to attempt. And there's more of the word deacon. Next is conbrio. Con or con, brio. Adverb from 1798. I love these musical terms. In a vigorous or brisk manner. And this is often used as a direction, <laughs> as a direction in music. Um, and this Italian phrase literally means with vigor. Con brio. Next is C-O-N-C, abbreviation for one, concentrate or concentrated or concentration, and two, concrete. Next is concanavalin. Sounds like a drug or something. Concanavalin, noun from 1917, a protein that occurs in the jack bean. The jack bean? Is that the bean that, that sprouts up the... The, the thing, uh, the jack bean occurs in the jack bean and is a mitogen and hemoglutinin. Hemoglutinin. Mm, this is um, a non-crystalline globulin found in the jack bean. Um, the, the new Latin is cannavalia. It's the genus name of the jack bean. The, the, the genus name of the jack bean is cannavalia. It, 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 there you go. Next is con concatenate concatenate or con- concatenate i think maybe concatenate was fine too c o n c a t e n a t e that is how you spell concatenate adjective from the 15th century linked together that is what it means uh, this is from the latin verb concatenare which means to link together from com plus catena which means chain Next is the same word, concatenate, second form from 1598, to link together in a series or chain. Concatenation is a noun. And our last word is two forms, concave, C-O-N-C-A-V-E. I don't know about you, but I can never keep track in my mind, concave, convex, which direction. One goes out, one goes in, and I can never remember, so maybe this will help me. Adjective from the 15th century. One, hollowed or rounded inward like the inside of a bowl. The inside of a bowl. Concave. It goes in. Ah, see, why didn't you think about that before? It's a cave. It goes in. Was that obvious to everybody else except me? Number two, arched in or curving in. 
and this is used of the side of a curve or surface on which neighboring normals to the curve or surface coverage and on which lies the cord joining two neighboring points of the curve or surface. Whoa. Uh, is that like geometry? Um, let's see. It's for, yes, from the Latin concavus, which is com plus cavus, uh, which means hollow. And there's more at the word cave. It makes so much sense now. Second form of concave, noun from 1552, a concave line or surface. Much simpler. So the words today were con, 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 albumen, con amore, con amina, conation, con brio, conc, con canavalin, concatenate, concave. Ooh. Do I pick one of the cons or the cones and my mouth is very smacky? Or do I pick, hmm, maybe we need to pick con amore with love and zest. Play that music. Play that funky music, white boy, with con amore. All right. It is, oh, no, I have to sing a song. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's con amore. So the holidays in Spain, it is 20N, whatever that is. Internationally, it is Africa Industrialization Day. In Brazil, it is Black Awareness Day. In, uh, well, it doesn't say where. It's just Children's Day. In the Roman Catholic Church, no, we're not reading that. In Argentina, it is National Sovereignty Day. In Mexico, it is Revolution Day. In Thailand, it is Royal Thai Navy Day. In Vietnam, it is Teacher's Day. In the LGBT community, it is Transgender Day of Remembrance. And it is just sad that that has to be a thing in the first place. Um, Universal Children's Day. So it's not just in a country or the world. It's in the whole universe is celebrating Children's Day. Uh, the other name for... Um, oh, I th what, what, what did it say? In Brazil, it was... Uh, Black Awareness Day, the other name for that is Day of Black Conscience. Mm, I think we got those. Let's go to the fun holidays. This doesn't sound fun, necessarily. Africa Industrialization Day, which we already said. Beautiful Day. Family Volunteer Day. Yes, go volunteer as a family. Go do something for somebody. If you can. It is Future Teachers of America Day. We need good teachers to teach the kids, and it is hard, and they need to be paid fairly. Fairly. It's not hard. Uh, but this holiday, next holiday, is called Go Hard, which stands for Globally Organized Hug a Runner Day. Go at them hard. Hug that runner hard. Name Your PC Day. National Absurdity Day. This, I think, is my favorite day of the year. Just be absurd. Uh, National Adoption Day. Oh, my God. It's also National Peanut Butter Fudge Day. Maybe today's a good day to end this holiday thing. Can't get any better than this. National Survivors of Suicide Day, also known as International Survivors of Suicide Loss Day and Survivor Day. Both of those. Um, oh, that must be related to Transgender Day of Remembrance, unfortunately. See, you know, this is whatever life brings us. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. That's just the way it goes. That is life. And then let's just check this one. National Pay Back Your Parents Day if you owe them money. Luckily, I don't. Mm, I think that's it. We have done it again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Let's vamp until we get to 15 minutes on the nose we're just a few seconds away people 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 goodbye oh boy word nerds how are you doing welcome to this brand new episode of the dictionary it is this podcast it's the place where i read this book and tell you what i think about it only me, only my thoughts most of the time. Uh, all right, we are at the top of page 257. Mm, let's see, uh, we'll save that for later maybe. Um, okay, okay, the first word in this episode is 
concavity, C-O-N-C-A-V-I-T-Y, concavity. Noun from the 15th century, it sounds like it's related to teeth, and it is sort of, but not really. No, no. Number one, a concave line, surface, or space, and the synonym is hollow. Two, the quality or state of being concave. Next is concavo convex. I think that's how you would say it. It's uh, it's two words with a hyphen. Concavo is the first word, and convex with an X is the second word. This is an adjective from 1676. One, concave on one side and convex on the other. See how that works? Concavo convex. Number two, having the concave side curved more than the convex, as in a concavo convex lens. Um, Let's see. Yes, and and I have to remind myself because it's been almost a week since I read the previous episode, concave. Concave, it's it's the one that goes in like a like a cave, hollow, a bowl. Uh, and then convex is the one that goes out. It curves outwards. Okie dokie. Next word is conceal. C-O-N-C-E-A-L. It's not the or or seal. This word, conceal, is a verb from the 14th century... Uh, I think it is just transitive. Number one, to prevent to prevent disclosure uh, or recognition of, as in conceal the truth. Two, to place out of sight, as in concealed himself behind the door. I mean, I guess sometimes that works. Um, and a synonym is the word hide. It's just hiding. It's the same thing. Conceal it, hide it. Concealable is an adjective. This is from the Latin concelare, which is from com plus salare, which means to hide. I don't know how the word changes when you add the com or the cone. Um, There's more at the word hell. Why hell? Okay, next word. Oh, uh, I missed a couple. So we said concealable is an adjective. We also have concealingly is an adverb and concealment is a noun. Next is concealer, noun from 1514, one, one that conceals, as in a concealer of the truth. Two, a cosmetic used to conceal blemishes or discoloration, especially under the eyes. I think I could probably use a bit of this stuff sometimes. Uh, Next word is concede, C-O-N-C-E-D-E. Verb from 1626, starting with transitive. One, to grant as a right or privilege. 2A, to accept as true, valid, or accurate. As in, the right of the state to tax is generally conceded. And uh, we have the next word is pronounced the exact same way, but it is spelled different and it is a very different word. Um, Okay, so next is 2B1, to acknowledge grudgingly or hesitatingly, as in conceded that it might be a good idea. 2B2, to relinquish grudgingly or hesitantly, as in concede power. And uh, I have a feeling that's the definition that is used when people are running for president and one of them wins and the other one has to concede. Um, I think it's kind of funny that grudgingly or hesitantly, how did I say that word before? Anyway, uh, I think that's funny that those words are in the definition for concede. It has to be grudgingly or hesitantly. Moving on to intransitive, there's just one, to make concession. Synonym is yield. Another synonym for everything is the word grant. Concededly is an adverb, and conceder is a noun. Let's look at the etymology. Uh, It's from uh, basically the Latin verb sedere, which means to yield. All right, moving on to conceit, spelled C-O-N-C-E-I-T. This is the first form. It's a noun from the 14th century. 1A1, a result of mental activity. 
synonym is the word thought. Let you just think about that one for a second. 1A2, individual opinion. 1B, favorable opinion. Uh, And then especially, excessive appreciation of one's own worth or virtue. 2, a fancy item or trifle. 3A, a fanciful idea. 3B, an elaborate or strained metaphor. 3C, use or presence of such conceits in poetry. 3D, an organizing theme or concept, as in, found his conceit for the film early. And that is a quote from Peter Wilkinson. What movie was he talking about? Who was he talking about? These are the questions that we all have. Um, I feel like I would have I would have appreciated some more examples on all of these. Uh, you know, it's it's so many different things, and my brain is just not comprehending if they're similar or very different or what. I don't know, and it doesn't help that we now have a second form of the word conceit. This is a transitive verb from 1557. I've used I've heard this word used in so many ways, and I guess you just sort of accept that it just it just fits in, but. This was a lot of good good information. I may have to rethink all of this, uh, think about it all over again, so I can figure out, you know, each one of these. I don't know. It, was it just me? Was it hard to sort of follow some of those things? I don't know. Maybe not. Okay, so second form of conceit, number one, is obsolete. The synonyms are conceive and understand. I am trying to conceit the definitions of the word conceit. Number two is chiefly British. Uh, No, sorry, I'm mixing up my things. It is a chiefly dialect. It is the synonym imagine. And then number three is chiefly British, and it means to take a fancy to. Uh, Okay, now we have conceited. We have added an ed. This is an adjective from 1526. One ingeniously contrived, ingeniously contrived, and the synonym is the word fanciful. Number two, having or showing an excessively high opinion of oneself. I, am I conceited? I I think to a certain extent we're all sort of conceited, but maybe it's not uh, excessively high. I feel like, uh, I don't know where I'm going with this. Just trying to add some color commentary to this, to use a, a recent word. Okay, conceitedly is an adverb, and conceitedness is a noun. Okay, next word is conceivable, adjective from the 15th century, capable of being conceived. And the synonym is imaginable. If it can be imagined or conceived, it is conceivable. Okay, oh, we have an example. Every conceivable combination. Conceivability is a noun, and conceivableness is a noun. Next is conceivably. Adverb from 1625. One, in a conceivable manner. It has been done conceivably. Two, it may be conceived. Synonym is possibly. As in, we could conceivably finish next week. I don't know why. I mean, that I use that word sometimes, but man, sometimes when you just focus on one single word, it just sounds weird and doesn't make any sense. But uh, no, no, yes, I could conceivably finish this podcast a whole year before it finishes airing because I try to get ahead and, you know, another 14 or so years from now, maybe I will get that far ahead. Okay, next word is conceive, C-O-N-C-E-I-V-E, verb from the 14th century, starting with transitive, 1A, to become pregnant with, and the example of what you might be pregnant with is young, Could be a human, could be an animal. To become pregnant with young, as in, conceive a child. 1b, to cause to begin. The synonym is originate, as in, a project conceived 
by the company's founder. 2a. To take into one's mind, as in, conceive a prejudice. 2b. To form a conception of, synonym is imagine, as in, a badly conceived design. Well, how did it get approved? Number three, to apprehend by reason or imagination. Synonym is understand, as in, unable to conceive his reasons. Four, to have as an opinion, as in, I cannot conceive that he acted alone. It is inconceivable. Intransitive definitions, number one, to become pregnant. Two, to have a conception, and this is usually used with the word of, as in, conceives of death as emptiness. That seems like that should be a quote. Um, it's a quote from this book. Did that? You do a, how, are we going to go into the, the topic of death right now? No, I don't think so. We're going to save that for the Ds. Another synonym for everything is the word think. Conceiver is a noun, also called the thinker. Etymology, this is from the Latin concipere, which means to take in, conceive, from com plus capere, which means to take. And there's more at the word heave. So you're taking the information and you are putting it in your head. The generally, that, that is generally the idea, I guess. And our last word for this episode is concelebrant. C-O-N-C-E-L-E-B-R-A-N-T. Concelebrant. Noun from circa 1931. One that concelebrates one that concelebrates a eucharist or mass that is related to i believe catholic catholic Catholic, my brain and my tongue ain't working catholicism or i think some people say catholicism um i i just i think this word is funny because celebrant celebrate but you added a c-o-n at the beginning for some reason concelebrant concelebrate all right, and then that word concelebrate will be at the beginning of the next episode. Okay, okay, so we had today concavity, concavo convex, conceal, concealer, concede, conceit, conceited, conceivable, conceivably, conceive, and concelebrant. Maybe I will pick conceive as the word of the episode. It just means. Uh, the the start of something becoming thinking all of those all of those fun fun words fun synonyms one day i had no how does this go i'm just, i don't know how it goes i'm making it up as as i go uh one day i conceived of an idea to record a podcast where i read the dictionary and i commenced that idea and it is happening okay in the holidays. In the Ukraine, it is Air Assault Forces Day. In Bangladesh, it is Armed Forces Day. Also, Armed Forces Day in Greece. In the in uh, Republika Srpska, I don't know how to say that word, it is General Framework Agreement Day. In the United Nations, it is World Television Day. Why is the, the United Nations celebrating World Television Day? Maybe it's just the countries that are part of the United Nations. Okay, there's more. It is World Hello Day. I should have started this episode by saying, hello, word nerds, like I normally do, do, but instead I went another direction for some reason. Um, It is World Day of Remembrance for Road Traffic Victims. Um, Let's see. In Latvia, it is All Souls Day. In, In where? In where? In Austria, it is Eternity Sunday. In Germany, it is Sunday of the Dead. Fun holidays. Uh, I don't know what this is. Alaska Tallow Day. Alaska Tallow Day. It shows a picture of a moose, and I don't know if the Alaska Tallow is a kind of animal or if it's a location, but it's it's a moose related. Maybe it is False Confession Day. International Day of the Bible. Mother Goose Parade Day, National Gingerbread Day, 
boy, it's not even Thanksgiving and we're already making gingerbreads. And I, here I am recording this before Halloween. National Red Mitten Day. That's in Canada. Pumpkin Pie Day. Oh, I love me some pumpkin pie. Um, let's see. We got all those. And then I think we just have one more. Let's just check this World Fisheries Day. Let's make sure that we are, if there's any fishing, fishing happening, it is done in a sustainable way. And you're not killing all these other animals that don't need to be killed. I mean, none of them need to be killed in the first place. It is Stir Up Sunday. Mm, GERD Awareness Day. And then finally, National Stuffing Day. Stuffing and pumpkin pie, both of those are on today. You should make sure that you go eat those. Is When is Thanksgiving? I should probably figure this out. Is it today? No, because it, it said today's Sunday. One, two, three, four. It's in a few days. Um, you know, I have my opinions on that holiday. Anyway, but stuffing, I'm just in it for the food. The vegan food. Uh, we just got some chips. I can't remember the brand, but they are stuffing flavored, and they are very tasty, and I think, I think I'm gonna go eat some right now, because I'm an adult, and I can do that. All right, we are going to end this episode there, this crappy, crappy episode. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this podcast called The Dictionary. I am your host, Spencer. Um, I'm not the host. I am your host. I am doing this here for you. Um... I just had to, I had some food. I had some some of those stuffing chips because I said I would. And, uh, you know, I was pretty hungry. So I think that was a good idea. I think that's why I was off my game in the last episode. Let's see if I can hop back on that game. What game are we playing? It is the game of life. Okay, the first word. Oh, I should warn you, there is a, um, a very frustrating word later in this episode um, that, you know, we just have to talk about for a little bit. Uh, but it, it will we'll get there. We'll get there. Let's not jump ahead. So the first word in this episode is concelebrate. C-O-N-C-E-L-E-B-R-A-T. Let us concelebrate. It is a verb from 1879. I am assuming it is something related to the Eucharist or the Mass. To participate in a Eucharist. As a joint celebrant who recites the canon in unison with other celebrants. That was transitive. Then there's intransitive. To participate as a celebrant in a concelebrated Eucharist. Concelebration is a noun. I don't know anything about this. Next is consent. C-O-N-C-E-N-T. And I am pretty sure we will be seeing another word that is uh, pronounced the same way, but with an S in the middle. And that is a very, very important word. Okay, so this word, consent, is a noun from 1585. It is archaic, and the synonym is harmony. Um, ah, I see where this comes from. I do, because I am reading it, and I shall read it to you. Um, it is from the Latin consentus, uh, or cons consenere, and that means to sing together. So when you are singing together, you are consenting. That is the where the word comes from. Why we're not using it anymore, I'm not sure. Uh, and then also canere, the verb, the Latin verb canere, that means to sing. And there's more at the word chant. Next is consenter. Hmm. So it, is it related to something that's in the center, or is it the one who is consenting, singing in harmony? We have to read to find out. It is a verb from 1598, uh, starting with transitive, to draw or direct to a common center. The synonym is concentrate. Concentrate is similar to concenter. The word center is almost in there. When you're concentrating, you are getting to the common center, I guess. And then the intransitive says to come to a common center. Uh, okay, next, oh, well, next is concentrate. What do you know? They are spelled similarly, so they are right next to each other. This is, uh, oh, it's the first form from 1641. Oh, I'm mixing all of this up. First form of concentrate, verb from 1641, 
Um, starting with transitive. 1A, to bring or direct towards a common center or objective. The synonym is the word focus, something I am still learning how to do sometimes. Uh, as in, concentrate one's efforts. 1B, to gather into one body mass or force. As in, power was concentrated in a few able hands. 1C, to accumulate a toxic substance in bodily tissues. To accumulate in bodily tissues. As in, fish concentrate mercury. Uh, yes, I have heard. I don't know why, but somehow fish accumulate a toxic substance called mercury into their bodily tissues. What is your toxic substance concentration right now? I don't know. Uh, what are we on? 2A, to make less dilute, as in concentrate syrup. Oh, well, now I, I guess to make less dilute, does that mean you're you're taking out any additional things like water? Okay, I get it. It has been diluted. You are making it less dilute. Is that hard, hard to understand for anybody else but me? Um, but now I want some concentrated syrup. I know, you know, there's concentrated juice. It's just the juice, not the water. It's in a, at least when I was a kid, it was in a can. You put it in the freezer and then you'd have to mix it with water. So it'd become regular juice. But why couldn't you just, I always wondered, why can't you just eat that? Why do you need to put water in it? Can I just let it thaw and just eat that because it's so sweet? And that when people, why people don't, people don't think like that, but I do because that's how much I love sweet stuff. But now I, concentrated syrup is going to be so strong. Okay, um, to be, to express or exhibit in condensed form. Now we're on intransitive. Number one, to draw toward or meet in a common center. Two, synonyms are gather and collect. Three, to focus one's powers, efforts, or attention, as in concentrate on a problem. I wish I had some powers. I think we all wish we had some powers. Con concentratedly is an adverb, and concentrative is an adjective. Words I don't think that ever get used. Second form of concentrate, noun from 1883. One, something concentrated as 1A, a mineral-rich product obtained after an initial processing of ore. And the, we're, about, we're about to get to the stuff that I was talking about before. 1B, a food reduced in bulk by elimination of fluid, as in orange juice concentrate. Um, that was an amazing definition. A food reduced in bulk. <laughs> so you're taking a, a good bulk of it out by elimination of fluid. You are removing fluid from a thing. How can you remove fluid from orange juice, which is already a fluid? What process are they doing? I, I would actually like to know this. How do they concentrate it? Or is it the other way around? Is it that the concentrate is the thing that's made first and then they they expand to it by in bulk by addition of fluid? Okay, number two. A feedstuff, as grains, relatively rich in digestible nutrients and compared to the word fiber. You got to get your fiber. Next is concentration, noun from 1634, 1A, the act or process of concentrating, also the state of being concentrated. Especially, wow, we have more to the definition, especially uh, direction of attention to a single object. You are putting your concentration on it. 1B, an academic major or area of focus within a major. 2, a concentrated mass or thing called The Blob, a movie I still need to see. Both versions. Number 3, the amount of a component in a given area or volume. Next is, this is the bad one, it is concentration camp. Two words. I think I always wondered, why did they call it a concentration camp? And based on what I just read, is it because that the people have been concentrated into one space to a common center? I don't know. We should read it, though. 
This is a noun from 1901, a camp where persons, as prisoners of war, political prisoners, or refugees, are detained or confined. A camp where persons are detained or confined. It says nothing about why they are called concentration camps, why that word concentration is in there. But if you have any ideas, let me know. Maybe it's super obvious. I don't know. This sucks. I mean, really, what else can you say about it? Um, yeah, I don't think anybody should ever go through this. And the people, you know, obviously when we hear concentration camp, we automatically think of the Holocaust in the early 20th century, the, the 40s, 30s, 40s, and I'm well past that, I'm sure. Um, with people, all types of people being put into concentration camps and bad things happening, and I can't believe that there are people who actively believe that none of this happened, and that's just shocking to me. Okay, let us now move on to the word concentrator. Noun from 1533. You know, when you read the dictionary, what I've learned is that you come across words and you just look at them in a different way. Like concentrator, the word traitor is in there but spelled differently. Like the traitor of your of the country, they, they're a traitor. How you can combine that into this word concentrator, I'm not sure, but I just notice these things. So sometimes I say them. Concentrator, noun from 1833. Spencer, you need to become a concentrator so you can concentrate on reading this instead of talking about things, and nobody wants to hear that. It's just one that concentrates as A, an industrial plant that produces concentrates from ores, uh, like, you know, oil or gas or, you know, those, the, those things, those ores from the ground. And then B, there's also a C, but B, a mirror or group of mirrors that focus sunlight for use as an energy source. And C, a device in a computer network that collects data from separate low-volume transmission channels and retransmits it over a single high-volume channel. Next is concentric, adjective from the 14th century, number one, having a common center, as in concentric circles. So, yeah, okay, they have a common center, and then they just grow out from there. There are different sizes from that same center, I guess. Yeah, that must be what it is. With the center. Number two, having a common axis, and the synonym is coaxial. Concentrically is an adverb. Concentricity is a noun. Next is concept. First form, noun from 1556, one, something, mm -mm, where'd we go? Something conceived in the mind. Synonyms are thought and notion. It's a concept that has been conceived. Number two, an abstract or generic idea generalized from particular instances. And a synonym is the word idea. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's see, this is from the Latin verb concepere, and that means to conceive. And there's more of the word conceive. The concept has been conceived. The second form of concept is an adjective from 1896, one organized around a main idea or theme, as in a concept album. I think those are fascinating. I honestly never really thought about that or was aware that that was a thing until I was listening to some podcasts just probably just within the last five years or so. And just hearing various people on various podcasts use that term, and I was like, oh, that's just such a cool idea that there's an, you're, you're making some music just based on a, an idea, a theme. I mean, it could be whatever. It could be like, we're going to make Lord of the Rings songs, or we're going to make a song that's all, or make an album that's like a, a, a story, you know, whatever it is. I just think that's such a cool idea. Uh, and I, I want to make an album called Poop Songs, it's just all songs about poop. These are the things that I think about. I make up dumb songs all the time. You experience that on this podcast, although I think some of the other ones I do not on mic are better because it's, you know, because th that's the scale that we're working with. Oh, I am not concentrating. Concept album. Those are cool. I need to listen to some. Number two, created to illustrate a concept, as in a concept car. Oh, those were always the coolest. I always loved seeing pictures of those concept cars when I was a kid. 
And they never came to be. They never, they never became real cars that people could get. Okay, our last word is conceptical. It's like the word receptacle, where you throw stuff out in, but it is conceptical. C-O-N-C-E-P-T-A-C-L-E, noun from 1835, an external cavity containing reproductive cells in algae, as of the genus Fucus. <laughs> what is that word? Fucus? F-U-C-U-S. Fucus. I don't know. Conceptical. Uh, this is a noun. We said that. i um, trying to look at the etymology. It is Latin. It, it means receptacle. It's, it's the same thing. Conceptical, receptacle. Uh, and it is from the Latin verb concepere, which means to take in. Because that is what a receptacle does. It takes things into itself. All right, so the words today were concelebrate, consent, concenter, concentrate, concentration, concentration camp, concentrator, concentric, concept, and conceptical. I think I shall pick concentration as the word of the episode because sometimes I get off track. I might have a little bit of some ADD or ADHD or whatever it's being called these days. It's hard to concentrate sometimes. It's hard to concentrate sometimes. You gotta focus with the genus Fucus. All right, let us talk about the holidays. Oh, so I uh, I went back and I finally looked. March 3rd, give or take, was when I started doing the holidays, I think. So I'm just gonna keep on reading these holidays until I hit March 3rd, uh, which happens to be my half birthday. Fancy that. And uh, then maybe I will stop reading the holidays and I'll do something else. Okay, uh, in the British Virgin Islands, it is Arbor Day. A-R-B-O-U-R. O-U-R. In Azerbaijan, it is Day of Justice. In Albania and ethnic Albanians, it is Day of the Albanian Alphabet. What is the Albanian Alphabet? I don't know anything about any other languages, really. What's the alpha, alpha, Albanian alphabet? The Albanian, the alpha, Albanianet. Let's see. It is Independence Day in Lebanon from France in 1943. In Costa Rica, it is Teacher's Day. What else? Um. Oh, I actually know somebody from Lebanon, and uh, my, and then you know they have kids they have a couple of kids so maybe i should wish them a happy lebanon independence day which it does say is being celebrated in the u.s in switzerland it is the onion market day in colombia it is national flower day in argentina it is national sovereignty day okay let's do some more fun unique holidays it is go for a ride day just go for a ride maybe on a bike because that's what it shows for the picture Humane Society Anniversary Day. I, I, I assume that they have done a lot of good stuff, and I apologies for the mouth smacks. It is National Cranberry Relish Day, and of course yesterday was Pumpkin Pie Day and National Stuffing Day, so that you were, we're like slowly gathering all of these Thanksgiving foods up for Thanksgiving. National Housing Day in Canada. National Stop the Violence Day. It would be great if we could do that. How can we do that? How can we stop the violence? How can we stop the anger, the madness, the hate in people's brains and hearts? How do we do that? It is Start Your Own Country Day. Mm, I've thought about that. Um, Anything else? Love Your Freckles Day. If you have freckles, I know a lot of people aren't too thrilled with them, but I think they're great. So love your freckles today. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this podcast called The Dictionary. If you like this podcast, uh, could you please let other people know? Because, you know, if you like it, maybe somebody else will like it, and that's how this works. Um, Let's see. I think we can probably just start right in. Uh, Yeah thought that I had something else I wanted to say, and I can't remember what it was. All right, so the first word for this episode is conception. 
C-O-N-C-E-P-T-I-O-N. I remembered what it was. Do you like the speed at which I'm doing this ad? Is it too fast? Is it too slow? Do I need to give you more pauses so you have time to think? I don't really give myself much time to think. I just go for it. But uh, if you have strong opinions on that, you can let me know. The email address is dictionarypod at gmail.com. Twitter and Instagram are just at dictionarypod. Let's see if anybody says anything. So, the this word is conception, noun from the 14th century, 1A1, the process of becoming a pregnant. Nope, there's no A. That would have not made any sense. The process of becoming pregnant involving fertilization or impl- implantation or both. I got nothing else to say about that. That's what it is. 1A2, the synonyms are embryo and fetus. So the the thing inside of where the conception has occurred is called the conception. 1B, it is the synonym beginning, as in joy had the like conception in our eyes. Uh, so if we replace it with the word beginning, joy had the like beginning in our eyes. And because I don't understand Shakespeare, who's the one who said that, I don't understand what that means because I'm a big dummy. Okay, also people just talk differently all those hundreds of years ago. 2A, the capacity, function, or process of forming or understanding ideas or abstractions or their symbols. Well, that was a lot going on there, and you made it very hard to understand that definition, which was about understanding. What is what is my conception of that definition? I'm still not sure. To be a general idea, the synonym is concept. To see a complex product of abstract or reflective thinking. To d the sum of a person's ideas and beliefs concerning something. Well, you get that a lot from me. You, I don't know how to put that into a sentence. Number three, the originating of something in the mind. Yeah, we, uh, the movie Inception is, that's all, it's the, the conception of an idea. I don't know, I can't, I can't figure out. Inception, I mean, we use, in, the word inception now has, has the meaning of a thing within a thing within a thing. Is that what it actually means? I don't think so. The inception of an idea of a... is Is it different than conception? How is it different? That's what I'm trying to rack my brain around. Conception, inception. If I say the words more times, then I will understand it. I don't think that's how that works. All right. Um, And then finally, the synonym uh, for everything is the word idea. Maybe inception is the act of the beginning of the idea, and then the con- the thing, the idea itself is the conception. Hmm. Uh, conceptional is an adjective, and conceptive is an adjective. Etymology, anything? Nope. Next word, conceptual. You can pronounce it so many different ways, however uh, you like. This is an adjective from circa 1834 of relating to or consisting of concepts, as in conceptual thinking, which is very fascinating. I, I, can't, I don't know where I'm going. We are going to get into some more conceptual stuff here in a minute, but I just like the idea of conceptual thinking, I guess. I think, I'm not sure if it is what I think it is. Conceptuality is a noun and conceptually is an adverb. I just love thinking about thinking. Um, Let's see, because this is from Middle Latin conceptualis, which is of thought, from the Latin conceptus, which is act of conceiving or thought. Yeah. Next is conceptual art. Two words, noun from circa 1969, an art form in which the artist's intent is to convey a concept rather than to create an art object. So it's art that has a an idea behind it, to convey a concept, to convey a thing, a concept, a way of thinking, right? Other than just a thing. But couldn't the, I don't know, most art, I mean, I guess, yeah, 
as as me who's like not really an artist, I don't think of like the idea behind the art. I mean, sometimes I have thoughts, but mostly it's just like, uh, it's just a thing. There's no there's no like underlying meaning behind it. So would that be not conceptual art? And then conceptual art is a concept. Maybe I need to find some examples and post them on the social media so you can get an idea of what is conceptual art. Or if you have your own ideas, you can let me know, or you can post it, or you can not, and you can just do it. Just make it. Just make the conceptual art. That's what I'm getting at. Be a conceptual artist. That is a noun. Next word is conceptualize with an S. It is the British variation of conceptualize with a Z. Can somebody keep a count of how many times I have had to say that very similar phrase? Because I'm not going to make a count. Conceptualism is next. Noun from circa 1838. One, a theory in philosophy intermediate between realism and nominalism that universals exist in the mind as concepts of discourse or as predicates which may be properly affirmed of reality. I was in no way prepared for that definition. Uh, This is something I feel like I will have to learn more about. I probably won't. I probably won't have time to, but it sounds fascinating. And I'm going to have to reread it right now. A theory in philosophy intermediate. Is that like intermediate philosophy? It's between realism and nominalism that universals exist in the mind as concepts of discourse. As concepts of discourse or as predicates which may be properly affirmed of reality. I don't think I understand this. I'm sure it's much easier to understand. And number two for conceptualism, it is often capitalized uh, to the synonym conceptual art. Thinky stuff. Conceptualistic is an adjective. Conceptualistically is an adverb. Next is conceptualist. Noun from 1785, an adherent to the tenets of conceptualism or of conceptual art. Now, do you have to, if you are a conceptual artist, do you have to adhere to the tenets of conceptualism? Or can they be different? Is the philosophy idea of conceptualism directly related to conceptual art? I don't think so. That doesn't make sense, but I guess either way, you'd be called a conceptualist. Next is conceptualize with a Z. It is a transitive verb from 1878. To form a concept of, especially to interpret conceptually. Conceptualization is a noun. Conceptualizer is a noun. And all of these words can be pronounced in multiple ways, however you like to say it. Uh, This concept of just conceptual, conceptual art, all these, it just has lost all meaning. Not that I fully understood the meaning in the first place, but... It's uh, I, th- I just think I think it's a fascinating idea of this. I don't know why I'm focusing on it so much, but uh, I think it's cool. And I guess the reason is because I can't understand it now, but I want to understand it. That's what's frustrating me. Okay, next is conceptus. C-O-N-C-E-P-T-U-S, noun from 1745, a fertilized egg, embryo, or fetus. Um, it is Latin. It is the one conceived. It is from the verb concepere, which means to conceive. Next, oh, this is our last word. It is concern. C-O-N-C-E-R-N. First form, verb from the 15th century. Starting with transitive. 1A, to relate to or be about. As in, the novel concerns three soldiers. 1B, to bear on, spelled B-E-A-R. Number two, to have an influence on. The synonym is the word involve, and then also to be the business or affair of, as in the problem concerns us all. Yes, it does, because we're all connected. Number three, to be a care, trouble, or distress to, as in her ill health concerns me. It concerns me too. Why is she unhealthy? Why is she sick? Can we fix her? Number four, the synonyms are engage and occupy, as in, 
He concerns himself with trivia. And then intransitive is obsolete, and it means to be of importance. And the synonym is matter. Let's see any etymology from uh, Latin, uh, Middle Latin, concernere. Uh, it means to sift together or mingle from cernere, which means to sift. And there's more at the word certain. And very lastly, second form of concern, noun from 1655, 1A, marked interest or regard, usually arising through a personal tie or relationship. 1B, an uneasy state of blended interest, uncertainty, and apprehension. 2, something that relates or belongs to one, and the synonym is the word affair. I don't want to get into your concerns, because those are yours. As in, it's no concern of yours. No, my concerns are not your concerns. N unless I ask for some help. Number three, matter for consideration. Four, an organization or establishment for business or manufacture. As in, a banking concern. Five synonyms are contrivance. I think that's how you say that word. Contrivance and gadget. And one last synonym is the word care. I care about your concerns. So the words in this episode were conception, conceptual, conceptual art, conceptualize, conceptualism, conceptualist, conceptualize, conceptus, and concern. Mm, I am concerned about which one I am going to pick. Um, probably one of the conceptual words. Shocking? Is anybody surprised about that? Maybe we'll just do conceptual, just the, the general word, uh, because it's thinking, thinking stuff, ideas, and things. Conceptual, conceptual. I sang it so sensual. I sang it so sensual. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I can't. You bet. You probably can't wait for this song thing to be done. In Japan, it is Labor Thanksgiving Day. In Frederick County, Maryland, U.S., it is Repudiation Day. In Slovenia, it is Rudolf Meister Day. In Georgia, it is Saint George's Day. Who is Saint George? I don't know why, but for some reason, when I was a kid, I loved the name George. Was it because of George Bailey from It's a Wonderful Life, which? which my we, we watched as a family uh, because it's because it's a good movie. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe that's why. I still have no idea. It just is so weird to me. Um, okay, it is Doctor Who Day. Uh, I'm not sure why. Also known as TARDIS Day. Uh, if I have ever, if, if I had ever seen Doctor Who, I've only seen one episode. I would really, really like to watch all of it. Uh, but if I had watched it, maybe I would understand why it's on November 23rd. Maybe maybe that's the first day it aired. Maybe that's the doctor's birthday. I know the concept. I just haven't gotten around to it. It's Eat a Cranberry Day. We had a cranberry thing yesterday. It is Fibonacci Day. Do you know Fibonacci? I'll tell you Fibonacci. It is the idea of taking a number uh, starting with zero and, well, you really start with zero and one. You got to start with the two. And then you add the second number to the previous one, and that gives you a new number. Then you add that number to the previous one, and that gives you a new number, and so on and so on and so on and so on. And today is 1123. So in the American way of writing the holiday, it's 11, it's 1123. So if you take one and you total add it with one, you get one. And if you take one, uh, sorry, no, that's not how it works. One plus one is two. Then if you take one plus two, then you get three. And that's where we get one, one, two, three. And then, of course, the next number would be five and then eight, etc. It's a uh, it's a mathematical thing, and it's kind of fascinating. Uh, and I think if I'm correct, I think it's related to the golden ratio because something like that. Anyway, it is National Cashew Day. It's National Espresso Day. It is Wolf Newt. I don't know what it is, but I want to boot the snoot of a Wolf Newt. 
Um, and then let's just lastly check this page. Nope, that's it. We got them all. All right. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to this podcast called The Dictionary. Um, we are at the end of section... section. It's not a section. It's the page. Page 257. Please go rate and review this podcast on whatever podcast platform you're listening to. If you would be so kind, Instagram, Twitter, at DictionaryPod. You can find all this information in the show notes, DictionaryPod at gmail.com. All those fun things. You can voicemail me, email me, DM me, voice memo something. If you want to chat, we can chat. Chat it up. Uh, Let's see. So there is a possibility that uh, for the next episode, I may... I may, if I can figure out the technology to do it, I may go over to my laptop and live stream this that recording. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do it yet. We'll see if I feel so inspired, or do I want to just uh, sit here on the bed all comfy instead of sitting at the dining room table. I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. But uh, if, if I do decide to do it, I will probably post about that. And uh, when you hear this episode in the normal uh, feed... It may sound different. It will be different. I will talk about different things, probably. Who who knows what the future will hold? Let's just be in the moment. All right, let's just read these words And in this last section of page 257. The first word is concerned. C-O-N-C-E-R-N-E-D. Concerned. Adjective from 1656. 1A. The synonyms are anxious and worried. As in, concerned for their safety. What situation are they in that they are concerned for their safety? I hope they get out of that situation quick. 1B, the synonym is interested. Or you could also say it interested. As in, concerned to prove the point. 2A, interestedly engaged. Is that how you would say that word? Interestedly engaged. As in, concerned with books and music. I am sort of concerned with books and music. I'm concerned with lots of things. I find them fascinating. To be culpably involved, and the synonym is implicated, as in arrested all concerned. Arrested all concerned? Does that mean that all those who were concerned in a situation have been arrested? Okay, next we have concerning it is a preposition from the 15th century. It just means related, relating to, relating to. And the synonym is regarding. Concerning, regarding, relating to. Good enough for that. Next word is concernment. Noun from 1610. One, something in which one is concerned. Two, the synonyms are importance and consequence. Three is archaic. The synonyms are involvement and participation. So many synonyms for this word. Number four, more synonyms. They are solicitude and anxiety. Again, as I say sometimes, I would love some examples, some some actual sentence examples of these. Okay, next word is concert. Yes, concert. First form, noun from 1571. One, Agreement in design or plan. Also, union formed by mutual communication of opinion and views. Our opinions and views and designs are in concert with each other. Number two is obsolete, musical harmony. And the synonym is concord, which we haven't gotten to yet, but we did have that other word. Was it in the last episode, a couple episodes ago? I don't know. It was harmony. It was an old word that was not used anymore that meant harmony. Oh, this one. Con- consent. Consent. And, uh, you know, if you look at these two words, actually, consent and concert, first of all, I think it's cool that they are literally right next to each other in the book. One's in the first column, the other's in the second column. Uh, but also, they have only have one, one letter that has changed. Concert, con- consent, and concert. Uh, that's musical harmony. I don't really know what tangent I just went on. Number three, a public performance as of music or dancing. 
It's a public performance as of music of dancing. Concert is also an adjective. In concert is a phrase, and the synonym for that is together, as in acting in concert with others. This is uh, from the Italian concerto. Uh, That's all it really has to say. Second form of concert is actually pronounced concert. Concert. Verb from 1652. Uh, We are starting with transitive number one, to make a plan for, as in concert measures for aiding the poor. The poor. I don't know why I say that word so weird. Uh, But yes, we need to concert measures to aid the poor. Number two, to settle or adjust by conferring, conferring, and reaching an agreement, as in concerted their differences. Am I saying this word correctly? I'm not sure. And then we have one intransitive verb definition, which says to act in harmony or conjunction. Etymology time. It is from Old Italian concertare, or would it be concertare? Perhaps from com plus certo, which means certain or decided, from the Latin certus, and there's more at the word certain. I am certain that... This word is all about harmony and coming together. We need to be in concert with each other. Next word is concerted. Concerted. Adjective from 1706. 1A. Mutually contrived or agreed on. As in, a concerted effort. 1B. Performed in unison. As in, concerted artillery fire. 2. Arranged in parts for several voices or instruments. It's uh, it's getting ready for a concert. It's been it's concerted. Concertedly is an adverb, and concertedness is a noun. Next is concert goer. You've you've probably been to a concert, so you have been a concert goer. This is one word. Mm, It's a noun from 1853. One who often attends concerts. Concert going is a noun or an adjective. What concerts have you been to? What's your favorite concert? Tell me. I will listen. Next is concert grand. Two words. Noun from 1885. A grand piano of the largest size adapted in volume, timber, or timbre, 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 and brilliance of tone to concert use. Uh... The, I have seen a video somebody made, I don't know how long it was, a 10 foot long, 15 foot long grand piano. I, don't, it's, it's, I would love to see and hear that thing in person. It wouldn't even be a concert grand. It would be a concert extra grand. I don't know what that would be. Next is concertina, noun from... 1837, one, a musical instrument of the accordion family. Maybe we'll post a picture on the social media of a concertina. Number two, the synonym is concertina wire. Two words. Yeah, it's like wire. I don't know. We'll have to read the next word to find out what that is, um, which I can do right now. Concertina wire, two words, noun from circa 1917, A coiled barbed wire used as an obstacle. Why do they call it a concertina wire, though? This is what I don't understand. Is this the thing that you see when people are doing obstacle courses and there's actual barbed wire? It's concertina wire? How is this different from barbed wire? Do we need to post a picture of this, too? Maybe we will. Later, when this is aired. Um, okay, next we have concertino. Is that it? Concertino, yeah. C-O-N-C-E-R-T-I-N-O. Noun from 1801. One, the solo instruments in a concerto grosso. And that is going to be at the end of this episode. So we'll learn more later. The solo instruments in a concerto grosso are the concertino. And number two, a sort of... A sort. You missed a letter there. A short concerto is just a concertino. Uh, Yeah, this is just the uh, Italian diminutive of concerto. Next is concertize. Concertize. 
Is this turning something into a concert? It is an intransitive verb from 1847 to perform professionally in concerts. Concertize. Next is concert master. One word. It seems like it should be two words, but it's only one word. Uh, oh, you could also be, it, it could be also concert meister, spelled M E I S T E R, master meister. Either one. It is a noun from 1853, the leader of the first violins of an orchestra, and by custom, usually the assistant to the conductor. And this is from German, Konzertmeister. That's where the Meister comes from. Uh, from Concert, which means Concert, plus Meister, which means Master. <laughs> In case that wasn't obvious to you already. Uh, okay, they are the master of the concert. Next is Concerto. This is a noun from 1730, a piece for one or more... Pff, or one or more soloists and orchestra with three contrasting movements. I didn't realize that it had to have three contrasting movements. I just figured it was just one one piece. Um, let's see. This, yeah, it's just from the Italian concerto, which, mean, which means concert. It is uh, this person plus orchestra putting on a concert. Uh, yeah, you got you to gotta be pretty good at your instrument if you get to be a, uh, a soloist in a con concerto. Here we go with that word. It's two words. Concerto grosso. Two words. The second word is G-R-O-S-S-O. -S -S it's not gross. It is a noun from 1724. A Baroque orchestral composition featuring a small group of solo instruments contrasting with the full orchestra. Hmm, I'm trying to figure this out. Um, so th it, it is Italian, and it literally means big concerto. So as we learned in the last one, a concerto is one or more soloists. But it sounds like this one, it has, it still has the full orchestra, but there's also a small group of individual instruments. So maybe it's like one violin, one viola, one cello, one bass, one maybe more instruments. Um, who are like the the group of soloists who are playing together with a full orchestra. It's a big concerto, opposed, opposed to a small concerto, which would just be one instrument, I, I guess. I don't know. Um, that's, that's that one. That is that one. And then our last word for this episode is two words, concert pitch. Concert, and then the word pitch. Noun from 1767, Number one, the synonym is international pitch. And number two, a high state of fitness, tension, or readiness. Concert pitch. Um, I, I know the first one. I'm not familiar with the second one. But the first one, concert pitch, um, when, when the whole orchestra or the band is tuning up, uh, they're tuning to concert pitch, which, I don't know, would it be A? Would it be C? It's probably A. One of the A's. And they have to all tune up to that one so they're out they're all in tune and if they're not in tune it's going to sound like crap and you don't want to you don't want the music to sound like crap do you maybe you do i don't know who you are uh okay so the words today were concerned concerning concernment concert concerted concert goer concert grand concertina concertina wire concertino concertize concert master concerto concerto grosso and concert pitch. This is very difficult to pick a word of the episode because that's what I do at this point. Um, maybe because it's a fun word and I'm curious to figure out more about it, I will pick concerto grosso as the word of the episode. And I also just like saying it in that Italian accent. Concerto grosso. Let's listen to some music by a concerto grosso. All right, now let's read the holidays for this November 24th. Uh, where are we? Okay, it is internationally, oh, maybe we'll save this one for the end. In Assam, not sure what this is, Lachit Divas or Lachit Divas. I don't know how to pronounce that. I don't know what language we're, we're talking here. In India, it is Murderdom of Guru Teg Bahadur. In Turkey, it is Teacher's Day. 
What else have we got? It is National Jukebox Day in the States, maybe other places. I always thought it was jukebox with a T, but it is juke with a K box. Why is it jukebox? I need I can't wait until we get to the J's so I can learn about this. Okay, any other holidays for today? Yes, of course there are. There always are. It's Blackout Wednesday. Oh, because today is the day before Thanksgiving. I think it has another name. Black Wednesday, Drinksgiving, Thanksgiving Eve, Wacky Wednesday. Lots of people like to get really drunk on today, I guess. Why? I don't understand it, but people do. Um... It is Brownie Locks Day, also known as Big Hair Day or Brunette Pride Day. And it shows a picture of two women having a great time laughing, drinking coffee. But one of them looks like a blonde and the other one has, you know, semi like light brown hair. But this seems like it should be more for dark brown hair. Why would they show that picture? I don't understand. It is Celebrate Your Unique Talent Day. This is great. You need to celebrate your unique talent. Don't hide it from people. No, you're not allowed to hide it. You need to celebrate it. No, you can celebrate on your own. That's fine. It is D.B. Cooper Day. Uh, You may not know who this guy is, but I think supposedly the story is he like, I don't know, stole a bunch of money. Did he hijack a plane? And then he jumped out with a parachute and then nobody ever heard from him again. It's like this this crazy mystery. Maybe I'll uh, post the Wikipedia link in the show notes so you can go learn more. It is National Family Caregivers Day. Give some respect to your caregivers. National Sardines Day. No, I'm not going to. Nah, I'm not going to celebrate that. National Use Even If Seal Is Broken Day. I would strongly suggest not celebrating that because there is a reason that they say don't consume if seal is broken. Taiwan On Day. I have a feeling this is more drinking. What do you love about America Day? I don't know. What do you love about America? There's a lot of things that are great and a lot of things that are not. And future Spencer here, I forgot that I missed one holiday. Uh, I thought it was going to come up on one of the other pages, so I would have been reminded to say it at the end, but it's Evolution Day. I don't know if this is just in the States or worldwide, but yeah, let's let's celebrate evolution because It's real, and it's always happening, and it has always been happening, Uh, you know, from the entire universe down to the tiniest little speck of something. Uh, Evolution in in various ways is constantly happening, Uh, so I don't know. I just love the idea of life is constantly changing and evolving in all the ways. Okay, back to the rest of the holidays or the episode, which is probably just the end. Uh, Let's see. So I think that was all the holidays for today. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. This is a very interesting episode because I am concurrently recording and live streaming to Facebook, and it's probably only going to be me who's watching the whole thing, uh, any bit of it, but we'll see. Maybe other people will join and they can uh, comment on the thing over there if they want to, and this will be an interesting uh, experiment. This is an experiment, and it would be fun someday to do this more in the future, but life is not uh, does not let that happen really much at all at the moment. Maybe someday. Okay, so uh, this, this section that I'm going to be reading happens to be airing on Thanksgiving 2021, November 25th. Obviously, you can listen to it after that as well. Um, it, it's the few lines at the bottom of page 257, and then it's the uh, first quarter of the top of page 258 in this dictionary book. And uh, let's see, I think I think we can probably just uh, say the words for maybe I will be able to post, reshare this thing somehow. Uh, I've got my logo in the corner here, which is a first, and all of this is a first. What am I talking about? Oh, and you know, if you've never uh, listened to one of these episodes, I should also say, this is all live when I record it. It is uh, no editing. Uh, sometimes I'll add in pieces of music later if I feel the need or other audio clips. Um, but it is all just, it's all just live. Um, 
and uh, and I read the words ahead of time, which I have done earlier, and uh, the the definitions I have not read. So it's uh, it's all it's all fresh to me, fresh to you, fresh to everybody, super fresh. Okay, like my armpits because I just showered. No, all right. So let's just talk about the first word. Um, there's going to be a lot of me looking down for anybody who happens to be watching live. Um, so the first word is concession, C-O-N-C-E-S-S-I-O-N. And uh, if there are people watching live, this is a Saturday afternoon. What are you doing sitting in front of your computer phone watching me read the dictionary? You should go out being enjoying the weather or something if you want. Okay, so concession is a noun from the 15th century. 1A, the act or an instance of conceding. Uh, yeah, we talked about concede a few episodes ago for any of you who are in the future. 1B, the admitting of a point claimed in argument. Let's try to read that one again. The admitting of a point claimed in an argument. You have conceded. Number two, something conceded or granted. 2A, so these, this is a sub-definition. Uh, the synonym for 2A... We have a couple of them. They are acknowledgement and admission. To be something done or agreed to, something done or agreed to, usually grudgingly in order to reach an agreement or improve a situation. To see one, a grant of land or property, especially by a government, in return for services or for a particular use. I don't comment on everything. It's just certain things that I have something to say on. Most of this is just me literally reading it. But I hope you will find it semi-interesting. Hopefully we'll get to something that actually is interesting that I can comment on. Okay, uh, 2C2. Man, we have a lot of sub-definitions in this one. A right to undertake and profit by a specified activity. 2C3. A lease of a portion of premises for a particular purpose. Also, the portion leased or the activities carried on. Let's go carry on some activities. Concessional is an adjective. Concessionary, that is also an adjective. And that is that for that. Uh, let's go back to the beginning. Or is there any etymology that we would care to tell you about? Nope, I don't think so. It basically is the word from the word concede. I think I may have a sneeze coming. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see if that will go away or come back. Okay, so the next word is concessionaire. Concession and then A-I-R-E at the end. This is a noun from 1862. The owner or operator of a concession, especially one that operates a refreshment stand at a recreational center. Um, I should also say that this is a family-friendly podcast. There, you know, we'll get to sometimes words that are maybe not particularly family-friendly, but, uh, you know, there's no no swearing, no, no particular adult talk. Um, so maybe this is something that you can watch or listen to with your kids. Anyway, let's go back to concessionaire. We already read that part. And uh, the etymology is nothing particularly interesting. It's the person who runs a concession stand. Uh, next is concessioner. Maybe it's similar? Noun from circa 1891. The synonym is, yes, the word concessionaire. Next is concessive. Adjective from 1711. One, denoting concession. As in the example, a concessive clause denotes concession. Number two, making for or being a concession. Concessively is an adverb. Next is, uh, th this one's fun because we actually have a photo example. It's not a photo, it's a drawing, um, but sometimes sometimes we get those. Um, okay, so it is the word, you could pronounce it a few different ways. You can say conk, or you could say conch, um, or conk. Maybe conk is another it's hard to hard to t decipher that, uh, but yeah, conch or conch. You you've probably you're aware of this. I, I'm guessing it is a noun from the 15th century. One any of various large spiral shelled marine gastropod mollusks, uh, as of the genus Strombus, 
Also, its shell used especially for cameos. What is a cameo in this context? I am not sure. Uh, number two, um, well, there, there is a drawing of this conch or conch. Uh, it's, you, it's a shell. It's the shell. It's the spiral shell. And then there's the opening. And sometimes there's creatures living inside of it like a hermit crab or something. Um, is there something living in it anyway? I don't know. I think maybe it's just the shell. No, but it's a, it's a marine gastropod. There's the thing in there. I think this is fascinating. And then they grow and the shell grows with them. It's a living thing. Number two is often capitalized, a native or resident of the Florida Keys. They are conks. Uh, number three is the number two definition for the word conca or concha, um, which is next, but it doesn't say which form. There's two forms, the first form and the second form. I'm not sure which one it's talking about. Okay, etymology for conch. Um, it's uh, from Latin concha, which means muscle or muscle shell, from the Greek conchi, akin to the Sanskrit sankha, which means conch shell. It's just the conch. And uh, this is this is fun times because my nose is a little runny for, for some reason. So um, maybe I have to go blow my nose? Do I need to go do that now? Sure. Stand by. Let's get back to it. Okay, so we finished conch after a short blowing my nose break. Next is conca, C-O-N-C-H-A, first form, noun from circa 1639, 1A, the plain semi-dome of an apse. Plain is just P-L-A-I-N, like maybe not fancy. Semi-dome? Semi-dome? Um, of an apse. Is an apse a, uh, a, 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 a snake? Ooh, I should know this. Uh, okay, 1B, the synonym is just apse, A-P-S-E. Number two, something shaped like a shell, especially the largest and deepest concavity of the external ear. Your ear is sort of, sort of, yeah, it's sort of shaped like an ear, like a, like a shell. Uh, the largest and deepest concavity. So isn't that just the, the ear hole? I'm not sure. Uh, this is from Italian conca, which means semi-dome uh, or apse. Uh, I think that's good for that. Conkel. Conkel. That's an adjective. Next is the second form of this same word, but instead of pronouncing it conca, it is concha. Concha, like the way it's spelled. Could also be uh, concho. Concho. This is a noun from 1887, an ornamental disc as on clothing or tack, of American Indian origin featuring a shell or flower design. We can very much see how these words conca, concha, are related to conch or conch. Uh, it's shells and shell-shaped. Um, let's see, it is from the American Spanish concha, from the Spanish word concha, which means shell, very obviously. Next word is... Conchoidal. Conchoidal. It is an adjective from 1666, having elevations or depressions shaped like the inside surface of a bivalve shell. Elevations or depressions. Conchoidally is an adverb. So anything that looks like a shell, shell, I guess, that would be conchoidal. Uh, this is from the Greek conchoides, which is like a muscle. That's the uh, the the sea the, the sea animal muscle, not the muscle in your body muscle. Next is conchology. I have a feeling this is the study of these types of creatures. It is an adjective from 1666. Nope, nope, nope. That's the wrong part. This is an a noun. Conchology is a noun from 1776, a branch of zoology that deals with shells. Conchological is an adjective, and conchologist is a noun. And this is a good place to plug one of my favorite podcasts called Ologies, uh, which is just lots of studies of things. She, the host, Allie Ward, interviews people who are ologists of some kind, and uh, they just talk about the thing that they study, and it's fascinating and fun. Uh, conchology, there's no etymology. Next word is concierge. C-O-N-C-I-E-R-G-E, 
noun from circa 1697. One, a resident in an apartment building, especially in France, who serves as doorkeeper, landlord's representative, and janitor. I think it kind of depends on the uh, the type of place, the type of place that uh, you're living in. Um, to have one of these concierges. Most most places don't have this. It's got to be a little on the fancy side, I think. Number two, a usually multilingual hotel staff member who handles luggage and mail, makes reservations, and arranges tours. And then just broadly, a person employed to make arrangements or run errands. Thank you, all of you concierges, for helping all the people. Uh, and the example of where this person would be employed would be just by a business. It's just a, g- a generic business. Um, I realize I have, I'm have. i looking down. I'm not giving you much eye contact because I have to read the book. Uh, let's see. This is from French, obviously, concierge. Uh, from the Latin conservus uh, or conservus, which means fellow. Ooh, fellow slave. That that took a turn. I, I did not realize that. Uh, fellow slave. I mean... Who, uh, who are the other slaves that they're with? I don't think I like this word so much. Can we can we replace it with a new word? Um, yeah, it's from com plus servus, which means slave. Sorry, concierges. I don't know if you knew where your, your, your title came from, but you are a fellow slave. Okay, we're on the last uh, episode. No, the last uh, word for this episode. It is conciliar. C-O-N-C-I-L-I-A-R. It is an adjective from circa 1677 of relating to or issued by a council. And conciliary is an adverb. So uh, I quickly will reread the words and then I will pick one uh, to be the word of the episode. And I might sing a little, little song about it because that is what I have forced myself to do to work my brain and uh, just be stupid. You got to dare to be stupid. So the words today were concession, concessionaire, concessioner, concessive, conch or conch, conca, concha, conchoidal, concology, concierge, and conciliar. Hmm. Uh, there wasn't really one that jumped out at me. Mm, I do I do like the shells. The shells are great. Uh, maybe I will pick conchology as the word of the episode because it is the study of shells. It's a branch of zoology. How do you sing a song about that? I think there might be a new person watching. There might be a new person watching. Okay. Um, conchology, conchology, go study the shells, conchology. All right, that's, see, that's about as much as you get with these songs. Um, okay. Somebody says, I've lost the audio on your live post after you left to blow your... Oh, crap. I forgot to turn this mic up. Apologies, apologies. Let me comment back to them. This this is why this is an experiment. I am very, very sorry. Do I need to go back and reread all the stuff? Uh, that is from Janelle. Janelle, you like basically all my posts, um, so I very much appreciate you giving you that uh, direct call out right now in public. Um, that's probably why they left. Okay. All right. That is a good place to... Read the holidays for today. Have to navigate back to my thing. Oh, I don't even know. Yes, I did. Okay, so today is November 25th in uh, the future times. Uh, Not in my times, but in your times when this is airing on, uh, you know, the regular podcast. Today is November 25th in the States. It is Thanksgiving. Uh, It is also Independence Day for Suriname from the Netherlands in 1975. It is, oh, we'll save that one. It is a national day in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I need to say these words correctly. Herzegovina. I think that's more correct. In Indonesia, it is Teacher's Day. In Thailand, it is Vajiravadu. I apologize. Vajiravud Memorial Day. I think that is cl- as close as I'm going to get it to accurate. It is a national day of mourning. That is the sad morning, not the daytime morning. Um, it's also Thanksgiving in Australia and Mexico and Puerto Rico. 
in Australia and the UK, it is White Ribbon Day. Uh, it's also Brazil Thanksgiving in where else but Brazil. And let's read the fun holidays. This one doesn't sound very fun, though. It is Blase Day. Uh, it just shows a picture of somebody looking sad out of the window that's raining, raining outside. It is Day of the Covenant. It is Family Health History Day. Mm, National Parfait Day. I love it when they rhyme. Shopping Reminder Day. I don't know. Turkey Free Thanksgiving. That's mine. That's that's my favorite one. Um, it is also Unthanksgiving Day, which is also known as, oh, see, this is what we need more of. The Indigenous People's Sunrise Ceremony and also Unthanksgiving Day spelled differently. Uh, we, we, we don't need to go down that road at the moment, but like, yeah, I mean, it, it's obvious. Same with Columbus Day. We need more Indigenous people celebrations. Uh, let's quickly just check this page to see if there's anything else that I missed. Uh, the last one that I wanted to save was International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. And I mean, that's such a big topic. How do you even, how do you even talk about that? Um, you, you just, you just have to talk about it. That's all you have to do. You've got to talk to people about not being violent against women. How hard is that? It's not that hard. That's, that, that's all we're going to say. So I'm going to end this official episode here by saying, uh, what do I say? This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye.